Hi, hello. It's another episode of Past Pixels. I just got done cutting the lawn, so I'm pretty tired. Dorian, how are you? I'm tired too. Not because I was cutting the lawn, but because I was up till 4 a.m. So we'll see how today goes. You see, I was being a stereotype. Um, would you say that napping is a, a a factor of being Canadian, or could you maybe bring in some sort of stereotype to this as well? To napping? Yeah, like I don't know. I, look, look, I'm trying to make a Hispanic joke about the fact that I was cutting a lawn, and I'm trying to see if maybe you can do that something stereotypical as well. Uh, I mean, no. No. Oh, okay, that's fine. No. It's okay. I, 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 I can lie and say I like chugged some maple syrup if you'd like. That's okay. That's good enough for me. Okay. I just okay. Right. look if we're going to start off with oh my fucking god. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I got distracted. I was about to say oh well if we're going to start with racism that's going to be a perfect segment for what we can just make our first topic. But then I saw at the bottom right of the computer saying that it was a heat wave right now and I decided to cut the grass during a heat wave. Awesome. Uh, no wonder I feel sapped. Uh, screw it. We're still going to transition anyways. How about Pleasantville? Yeah, that was uh. Uh, you know, I think Pleasantville is a very important movie. Um, mm-hmm. It shows what will happen if women get too many right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree. <laughs> and you know, just there's nothing more terrifying of the thought of coming home and there being no wife, no lights, no dinner. Now, like, horrible. The- the no lights, the no life, no dinner. Now, um, one of those sounds pretty good. I'll let you choose which one. Uh, the other two sound pretty fine i've you know i'm just gonna say that pleasantville is a um it's a movie that whenever you see and you just see some of these um colored um you just kind of see them and you're thinking what are they doing out there you're just peering out your window you're pulling down the blinds you're like what them colored folk doing out there what are and then you decide i don't they do some of these things that i don't know how i feel about i don't know if it's exactly right they're they're sinners. Um, I don't exactly know why they're pretending that sex is a normal thing. Um, honestly, I'm quite disgusted by it. And uh, I feel like they should have just stayed in black and white and burned whatever books uh, were dangerous and try to keep everyone safe. You know, for the children, of course. Yeah, that's all the books, by the way. You just burn all of the books to be safe. Okay, yes. You don't yes, pick so. and choose. Of course, of course. Um, so anyways, you know, Pleasantville, I, I feel like it's it sets a very dangerous precedent of, you know, it empowering those coloreds. You know, I don't know how I feel about that. I think it might be a bit of a dangerous message if you ask me yeah the problem with colored people specifically um is that you don't really know a lot of their motives and why they got the way that they are so True. you kind of they're have very to different be, too they are they're very different and it's not that i, I well, they I, can I do that at home okay they can do yeah, that yeah, at home like, i'm not a hateful person I'm I'm, i don't hate them either i let's well, be clear i don't, I don't yeah. hate them yeah let me be very clear i do not hate the colors but I think there needs to be some questions on how they became the way that they are. That's all. Look, I'm just going to say that being colored was a fad. I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just yeah. have to say it that, you know, if the movie just kept going and if society had held strong with its morals, that, you know, none of this in this movie could have happened. And I, you know, I, I had the movie open. I think it's saying that it's a it's a comedy. You know, I think it might have been a horror movie. Um, You yeah. know, it may yeah. have been. Honestly, even a documentary on the level of idiocracy. I agree. I agree completely. And I think uh, I think this movie is one that needs re-examining by people because this did come out in 1998, and I think there'd be a lot more people nowadays that would uh, would be quite terrified of what they're seeing in this film. I, you know, I'm very glad that things that happen. Okay. Oh my God, this is a real bad Jenga tower of just stuff we've said. At what point do we break? Do we keep going? <laughs> yeah. Well, now you've broken it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, listen, listen. Uh, they can learn uh, the sinning ways. That, no, no, you're right. We already broke it. Fuck it. So we can't, I can't go back. Um, so do you see why I told you to watch this movie? Yeah, it was it was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, I did not expect this. Look, I thought the entire movie was just going to have this undercurrent of like, yeah, the 50s were a little messed up, but it was fine. And I didn't expect the movie to turn on a dime and just be like, oh, yeah, that messed up thing. Yeah, that's the direction that we're going. It's like, oh, I 
okay okay that's awesome <laughs> that's not what i was expecting but thank you yeah when we get the uh when we get the literal no colored signs i got a good chortle out of that i was like oh <laughs> i was cracking up i was like oh my god they did it they did it i thought it was just gonna be more like oh well 90s kids you know they're a little bit looser with some of this stuff than uh than some of the 50s kids were but then you'll find out they were no different like i thought they were gonna go for like the back to the future angle of like well, if you met your parents, you probably wouldn't be that different. And then they're like, oh, no, no, you're different. And, you know, you're probably worse and better in different ways. But like, you know, probably still overall better. No, I, I completely agree. By the way, while we're here and while we're talking about, uh, since, I mean, since we just skipped the table contents and apparently no, 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 we're still going to do anyways. the table contents. It's just that we want, I wanted that really nice transition that I just did right now. You know, like, well, that, that that's fine. But, but we've started to a Pleasantville, so we're tripling down on this now. Uh, look, I know, I know you don't like blondes. And that's fine, but Jesus Christ, uh, no, the things, no, no, no. I, would do, the things look, look. I would do to Reese Witherspoon. Oh my God! Here, I agree. Like, the, I, no, no, I agree. Like, it's not. It's not that I don't like blondes. It's just that for the most part, whenever I see a blonde, my brain can see them fifty pounds heavier and thirty years into the future, and like, it's a bad thing that my brain does. It like it like AI autofills like an aging filter on them. Like, you know, that's you a nice look, thing though. I think she still looks pretty good for her age, too. Oh, no, she looks great. So, like, that's the thing. Yeah, like, it, it, yeah. my brain, even adding that, is like, no, she looks good. Good job. Good job. Yeah, um, yeah she could definitely put some color into my life. <laughs> um, one thing I just want to say, because I didn't expect him here, and it even took me a little bit to recognize him, Paul Walker in this is like, oh, man, you're really charming, and it's actually comedic that you still have the surfer bro sound to you, even though it's supposed to be the 50s. I didn't even know it was Paul Walker. I know who you're talking about now, though. But now, now I'm connecting the dots. But yeah, that's that's interesting. I I kind of wish that they would have given him more attention because I like the idea of him learning what sex is and then him becoming like the biggest Nazi ever. Like that would have been so much more entertaining <laughs> if he would just been like, "Listen, if you sleep one more time, Jews are okay." Then it's like, but like until that moment, I hate all of you. Yeah, I mean that's probably probably left on the cutting room floor, but that's my head cannon. <laughs> If they just stayed in that universe and they lost that courtroom case at the end, Paul Walker literally does turn into Hitler in that universe. Like, they have a Hitler 2 because that's in the 50s. Hitler 2? Okay, I like that. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, Pleasantville was a pleasant surprise. I, I was not expecting that. And uh, Frog, who has not been on here at all, but he is a he is a good boy. And, and we appreciate all of his... Uh, well, no, it wasn't even just him. It was Radic too, who was on the Uncharted episode. But like, you know what? I want to give Radic the fro the. I was about to say the frog. Um, no shit, frog. I want to give frog the win because sentences are very hard. Um, so yeah, Pleasantville. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a pleasant time out of ten. <laughs> uh, it's a seven out of ten for me. I enjoyed it. It was a good movie. Um, and yeah, I, I've actually seen it before. I just I was young and I didn't remember shit. So good rewatch. I really remembered like practically nothing. So I'm glad I rewatched it. Yeah, once you told me that you had seen it and you're like, I don't really remember it. It's like ah, this is a. I don't know if this one's that hard to. You know, it, this one doesn't seem like it's one to forget. Like, I know that if I ever heard Pleasantville again, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's that movie that had a hard turn in the middle of it. And it's like, oh, OK, I didn't realize that that was going to be the main thrust of the movie. Cool. I like this more now. Yeah, no, I agree. It, I was just young and stupid, so I, I, I won't forget it now. I'll tell you that much. You could have just said stupid and we would have assumed young. Um, all right. Uh, table of contents, because, you know, I skipped that. Um by the way, completely unrelated, but I just thought this was funny. Uh, like, I, I got out of the shower after cutting the grass. I was uh, sitting down. I was looking through notifications on my phone, and I saw that Ben um, had posted a tweet. Like, uh, it was a picture of, man, I don't remember. Uh, Scott, who's who's the main actor of Severance? Adam Scott? Oh, um, Adam Scott. Yeah, okay. It was a screenshot of Adam Scott uh, from Parks and Rec, and it's like, would a depressed person do this? And it's like, it's like a meme where it's like, well, yes, that is what a depressed person would do. And so what he did is that he edited it to show a letterbox diary of all the Resident Evil movies. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm depressed. Um, so that's the preamble before my uh, table of contents, because my table of contents is Resident Evil 2002. Resident Evil Apocalypse, um, <sighs> Predator, The Third Birthday, Danganronpa V3, GT7, Gran Turismo 7, I, I guess I have to clarify that because some of you are Philistines, uh, Days of Thunder, Twin Peaks, Sayonara Wild Hearts, Resident Evil Extinction, 
Resident Evil Afterlife, Resident Evil Retribution, Resident Evil The Final Chapter, this time produced by Sony, 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 Jim Ryan himself. Uh, Pleasantville, but we already got that out of the way. Uh, Lawrence from Arabia, Mario Party Superstars, and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Give me your table of contents. So I've got The Quarry, Band of Brothers, Severance, Chinatown, The Celebration, The Batman, Crimes of the Future, Cosmopolis, Titane, A Dangerous Method, The Red Shoes, Raising Arizona, Blood Simple, The Green Knight, Crazy Heart, and then Memories of Murder, Oakja, Mother, and Thirst. Do you ever think about just the fact of how schizophrenic our ta- our uh, table of contents are in any given episode? Yeah, they get uh, they get pretty different, but you know, I always have like a little. I, I, I lately I've been having like a little theme to mine. Like I got like a like I got a little Kinoberg block here again. I got some South Korean Kino blocks. So there, there there's you know there's a method to the madness. That is true. That is true. Okay, so let's go ahead and count this off because let's figure out how lopsided it is because I wasn't keeping count. So Resident Evil, that's all going to be one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine. Nine what? Sorry. Uh, nine topics. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five. I got like 20 or something. 20. So, all right. Just... Yes, yeah, so you are going to rough shot again. Go for it. All right. Well, let's let's start getting some big bangers out of the way. In fact, let's start with the Kino Blur, uh, blah, 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 Kino Blur block, shall we? So, oh, of course, of course. By, by the way, I am including Titani in this. I am well aware that Titani is not a Kino Blur film, but if once you see it, and I'm talking to people out there, not you specifically, because I don't know when you're going to get to Kinoberg. But uh, once you see Titane, uh, you'll understand why. It's very inspired by his stuff. So we'll just call it a Kinoberg body block, a uh, body horror it, block. It inspired, because even if exactly. you're making something, you're probably inspiring yourself to do it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, crimes of the so I'm going to talk about crimes of the future, Cosmopolis, Titane, and a dangerous method. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to start with Cosmopolis because this movie fucking sucked. <laughs> and here's the funny thing: you usually. Usually, if there's a director that I find very quality and I like, so I like Cronenberg a lot. Like, I think he's a great director. Usually, I won't find a movie in their in their, in their their filmography that I just outright think sucks. Like, it, there's usually something to it, right? Like, even Videodrome, which I'm not a huge fan of Videodrome. I think it was fine, which a lot of people love that movie. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I can see why. I thought it was well made and there was some good stuff to it. Uh, Cosmopolis is just fucking terrible. And I don't, I, I really don't understand how he missed so hard with this. Um. Robert Pattinson is in this, and he's very good. Uh, he's trying his best here. And then Paul Giamatti shows up kind of like 15 minutes before the end of the movie and is also pretty good. Everyone else in this movie is fucking horrible. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know why, if it was just misacting, if it was just his guidance or what happened. But holy shit, this movie is terribly acted. Uh, and w- worst of all, the biggest crime of all, it's boring. Like, I, I, I think back to The Power of the Dog to invoke that <sighs> wonderful movie. And I thought that was kind of, I thought that was dull at times. Uh, This is like 3000 times times worse though. Like I, I, I haven't seen a movie this boring in a long ass time. It's literally just like Robert, like half the movie is Robert Pattinson driving in a limo and having these like, really like Reddit. I am smart conversations and it's horrible. Uh, (laughs) Like I just uh, don't, yeah, I just don't understand where he was going with this. And I think this was like his first movie after Eastern promises too. So I'm like, Oh my God. Like, I guess he was trying to do the more serious thing at this point. And this is another one. There's not, there's like no body horror here. This is just a serious movie, but Oh my God, a horrible mess. And uh, really just a bad movie. I did not like it at all. When the fuck am I even going to get to this? Like this is a bad movie. So like, I'm never going to do this either, but like I'm barely doing David Lynch, man. Just I'll get there. Just go on without me. Yeah, if you have anything to add, feel free when I move on. But oh, no, probably not. Going. That's that's covering everything. Yeah. I who knows. That's what I figured. So anyway, so that's a three out of ten for me, uh, and solely a three out of ten based off Robert, pa- Robert Pattinson and like the ten minutes of Paul Giamatti at the end. So <laughs> yeah, horrible movie. Uh, okay, more positive now. Uh, a Dangerous Method. Uh, this was just really cool. This was like a really kind of like kinky, uh, really kinky, uh, horny dr- historical drama, which you, you don't see a ton of these. Um, it's basically about, uh, be fair to call it a, oh my God, what was the term that I used for like, um, handmaiden? Um, oh my God, there's a term sex, sex drama or something like that. Sexually charged drama. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've never seen the handmaiden. So either, so I'm sure that's, oh wait, am I getting this? Am I getting the handmaiden mixed up? It was the Bong Joon-ho movie that we watched. Oh, uh, the ha- oh, the ha- oh, the handmaiden. What am I thinking of? Yeah, no, that's right. I was Are thinking, you thinking of the Hulu show. 
Yes, that's why. Okay. Yeah, the same name. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, that's what I was thinking of for some reason. Yes, it's oh, similar to that. Field. There we go. That's what it is. Yeah, it's similar to that. Um, this one's based off of like real shit, though. It's like uh, talking about Sigmund Freud's methods. And, oh, God. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it, like it's his, uh, and he's like a little feud with this other uh, like psychiatrist at the time. That's this not other what psych- I meant when we talked, sex- when we said sexually charged drama. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the one, like, the one of the psychiatrists is getting horny for one of his patients, which is Kira Knightley. So I kind of understand. Uh, it's understandable. Um, but yeah, so, but yeah, oh. hey, this was, but yeah, this was enjoyable, honestly. I thought it was good. Uh, really different from the normal uh, Cronin Kino stuff. I mean, it's horny and he's always horny, but that's about all it has in common with this because it's just a straight drama. There's no violence in this. Uh, even Eastern Promises and A History of Violence has some pretty like grotesque like headshots and stuff like that and just like some gross violence in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this had no- none of that. So it was just very straightforward. Uh, Michael Fassbender is in this. It kind of steals Ooh. the show. He's really great. Um, and even they had Vigo Mortensen here playing Freud and I expected that to be the standup performance, but it's not Michael Fassbender really, really is great here. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, this, this was enjoyable and, uh, definitely worth checking out. So this is a seven out of 10 for me. I liked it. Okay. Two things. One, uh, Michael Fassbender. That means I may end up taking this one out of order because I do want to watch a whole lot more of his movies at some point. Uh, and two, um, I did say the word roughshod earlier and I was like, ah, shit, I think that may be the first worst, first word, first time I've ever said that word out loud. And I wanted to be sure, oh, shit, did I use that wrong? And I looked it up and it says having shoes with nail heads projecting to prevent tippling for a horse. And I was like, oh, no, I used that word difficultly. Uh, sorry, wrong. God, words are hard. Uh, but then I read description. What does it mean to run roughshod? Uh, to completely ignore the opinions, rights, or feelings of others. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Never mind. I used that correctly. So congrats, everyone. Roughshod is the word of the day. Continue. Yeah, that's uh, that's roughshod. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it. That's used it wrong. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Titani. Let's talk about Titani now. So this is okay. Let me actually look up this girl's name. So mm-hmm. I'll probably say it wrong anyways, but I want to make sure I. Give her the props because this is not actually a King Burn movie. Uh, Julia Ducourneau. We're going to say that. Oh, that's French. French. I'm not going to even try. So French. We're not trying it. Um, Anyways, uh, so this movie was on my spite list for a little bit just because I was annoyed by people keep talking about it. Uh, And as usual with the spite list, I ended up enjoying it when I finally watched it. You really do pick (laughs) them, do you? I do. I do. Lords of Arabia one day, baby. Uh, Okay. (laughs) God, I hope you never see that movie. I really hope so. So I can praise it even harder. No doubt. Uh, this is clearly, though, inspired by Cronenberg. This is just some kind of weird body horror shit about a fucking girl that likes to fuck cars. We've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. Mm-hmm. Um, Look, this is a weird movie. It's very tonally all over the place, but it works. Like, the start of this movie is just fucking insane. And I actually, I think like the first like half an hour is like, oh, I'm, I don't don't think I'm going to like this movie. Like I get what they're doing, but I don't like it. But then the tone completely fucking shifts and it basically turns into a drama and it's like, Oh, okay. And I like where it goes from there. Um, and then it kind of gets weird again near the end, but that's to be expected. Um, I- I'm still kind of chewing on the ending. I'm not quite sure how I feel <laughs> about it, but this is a very unique movie and definitely, definitely worth watching. Like, I, even though I'm still not sure how much I like it, I definitely do like it. And uh, it's pretty crazy. So, you know, you got to give movies a props for that, right? Okay. I, I just have to say, I sent you a link. Just click it. Uh, okay. Where'd you send it? So, oh, no, no. I sent it within the same chat for Zencast. Oh, okay. So okay, okay. it's the Wikipedia page for the director, right. uh, Julia right. Ducren. I don't know. There's like seven syllables in there and there's like five words. Um, right. Just look at her. Yeah, I know. Bunk. Yeah. That's just, okay, that's all. Uh, you yeah, see, no, that, she's that, she's she, she's definitely bonk. She's uh, she's a cute one. Mm-hmm. So now I brought that up uh, specifically because I wanted to see. Oh, I think I know something about Titan. And I was like, let me look it up. And yes, I was right. She also directed the movie Raw, where it's about a yes. teenage girl and supposed to be a metaphor for puberty about how she wants to eat flesh. And it's like, oh, okay. So you just kind of make the weird movie. Okay, sure. Titan, who the hell knows when I'm going to watch it? But Raw is one that has been flowing around in my periphery where it's like, you know what? I am kind of curious about that one. Let me go ahead and check and see if it is streaming anywhere. Part of me wants to guess Hulu. No, never mind. Netflix. Interesting. Okay. (sighs) I don't know what I'm doing today. Maybe. I don't know. I doubt it. 
But okay, sure. That's it. Who knows? Maybe one day. Yeah, Raw. After this, I definitely want to check out Raw too. It was actually streaming on Crave and I had it on my watch list for a while, but it's not there anymore. So mm-hmm. I'll have to uh, I'll have to wait until it comes on something else or rent it. But uh, yeah, no, I definitely want to check that out after Titan because it was good. So uh, yeah, so 7 out of 10 though. I enjoyed it. Good stuff. And that was the block, right? I uh, don't. No, one more. So, oh, okay. Okay. Crimes of the Future, the new, oh, okay. the new Kinoberg joint, um, and I really, really like this. Um, I think this one's going to be very divisive amongst people. Dope. It's certainly not what I was expecting going into it, especially from the trailers I'd seen. Um, it, you know, if you haven't seen the trailers, I guess minor spoilers, but it's talking all about how surgery is the new sex, and basically people's. Um, People are growing new limbs and everything like that. And some people are like turning it into performance shows and like literally taking the limbs out of people. And yep. I'll, I'm not going to go much further than that because that's kind of what the trailers reveal. And there's a lot more to it. Um, this was interesting, though. I love this. One of the coolest things about this movie is I remember <laughs> I remember Cronenberg saying that, oh, man, after the first five minutes of this movie, people are going to walk out. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be so fucked up. There's going to be, like, fucking people, like, fucking fucking stomachs and shit like that. Like, that's what I was expecting. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's Cronenberg, right? And he's right, but it's not for the reasons you think. And it's mm-hmm. this is such a thoughtful movie, and I was not expecting to say that about this. There's a very clear message behind it. And it's just, it seems like, you know, he's kind of older and wiser now. And he's like, you know, you know what I want to, I'm, I'm going to do some fucked up shit, but I also want to tell a story here. And he does that. And it's just excellently done. Uh, the set design's really cool in this. Like, it was obviously pretty low budget, but like what they managed to do, like, oh my God, there's like these weird like chairs that are like part flesh and like moving around and shit. And it's just so weird and cool. Uh, the entire movie's got like this really cool mood and atmosphere to it of like it just you I bought into this world instantly. And I think if you don't buy into this world, you're going to have trouble with the movie. Uh, but it works for me. Uh, all the main cast here was really good. Viggo Mortensen, Lea Sado, uh, Kristen Stewart, uh, all just really well acted and well done. Um, and yeah, I think people like I said, I think people are going to be quite divisive on this one when they finally see it. Uh, but I'm really glad I saw this in theaters, and I think it's uh, one of my favorite uh, Cronenberg movies. So really enjoyed it. Uh, that's a solid, rock solid eight out of ten for me. You kind of sold me on it. Um, however, knowing me, it's not going to do anything. It just means, oh, cool, I get to repeat my phrase again. I'll get to it when I get to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll get there one day. All right. Um, I know you have a whole bunch, but since you had a block, let me get rid of my block and Please, what better way to follow <laughs> up Cronenberg than <laughs> the works of one Thomas Anderson. We won't talk about the middle name. Um, <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil. Okay, oh, now listen, boy. listen. There have been many moments in cinema, okay? There was the moment where uh, first, we got to see a train moving, and people in the 1800s freaked out because they thought the train was going to come through the screen. Idiots. <laughs> so, uh, basically, right, there was that. There was the time that they had audio, they had color, they had The Godfather, and then Paul W.S. Anderson said, I'm about to make my masterpiece. And then he made Resident Evil 2002. And you know what? It's a bad movie. Uh, uh, there's a lot of buildup. This, this this movie's not good. Um, it's fine. Whatever. The, it's it's just it's just boring. Um, they who the hell know knew that that laser corridor was going to be like really famous and they were going to throw it in every movie afterwards like it was a calling card when it's like it never it happened in any of the games or anything. Sure, whatever. Fine. It's going to be really hard because I kind of want to talk about the movies and the context and the games. But then, like, at the same time, like, the games have shitty stories and, like, who really cares about the lore? So, like, what is the point of that? So, like, it's more of just, I guess, the spirit of Resident Evil. It's very funny because at the beginning, you are in a mansion. So you're like, oh, okay. so if you're just going to have zombies in a mansion and maybe like a couple of keys, okay, you know what? If Rise of Skywalker can, can be a fucking fetch quest for two hours, then why can't just a Resident Evil movie do that? And then they just be like, hey, you want to skip to the last third of every Resident Evil that no one likes? And everyone said no. And then said, then Paul W.S. Anderson said, okay, cool, we're going to do that instead. And you just go down there, and it's like, oh, man, okay, fine, whatever. Michelle Rodriguez is 
smoldering here. She's doing her usual. You hear that? Mo- oh, I can't even try it. Whatever. Um, that's the thing. I shouldn't be giving this movie more effort than the movie itself does. But like this movie sucks. Um, it's just something that like I'm sitting in bed. And I'm like, I'm not ready to really pay attention to something. But if I can kind of glance over something and then just start laughing at it. Sure. This movie did have like a good laugh out loud moment when like um, Mila Jovovich uh, jumps and like she jumps onto a corner and then kicks a zombie dog out of this out of the air. And it's like that did have me fucking cracking up like that was great. Um, the little red girl is a CGI homunculus that's terrifying. Um, I don't understand how they let that go through. But, like, it's terrifying in a, like, oh, God, that is, like, that is Uncanny Valley. I don't understand how anyone let that get out of the planning phase. Uh, so, yeah, this movie, um, no. Resident Evil Apocalypse, on the other hand, this is uh, way funnier. Uh, this is so much stupider. Um, this is honestly what the movie should have kept doing. They should have just kept taking pieces from Resident Evil and just be like, whatever, we're going to throw them in here. And then there's a random moment when they're like, hey, you want to have a Silent Hill section where we go to a school? And it's like, um, not really, no. And it's like, well, we're going to try and be scary. It's like, I, no one asked for this. However, seeing like a very petite woman uh, fist fight uh, Nemesis and actually survive the fight is fucking hilarious. Like, there's no getting around to that. That like seeing Nemesis like have emotions and get stabbed and protect people fucking hilarious like i it's one of those things that like i like resident evil but like i also really like it seeing be, being disrespected so something about nemesis just being like i want to protect you like i he didn't speak i kind of wish they would have made him speak like imagine he spoke and it was like gilbert godfrey's voice or something like that that would have been gold that was a missed opportunity but like this movie is bad but like there are so many ridiculous ridiculous action shots in this where it's just like why would you do this why did you think this was cool why did anyone in the mid-2000s think this was cool we had too much power we sent a man to the moon and then it was a domino effect of getting to a point where a cgi liquor hugs a motorcycle and then we get a slow motion shot of a bullet blowing it up fuck it whatever who cares and by the way um, this is the first time in a long time that it's like, am I getting old or are the children wrong? Uh, because I feel like I used to understand what was going on way better in action scenes, but I think now because I actually pay attention or I'm getting old, one or the other, uh, I can look and just see like, oh wow. So they just decided to hire Michael J. Fox in the middle of a really bad attack to edit this movie, huh? Like there's no other explanation of like, why this movie is edited this way like i want to take a clip of this movie i want to download it off of youtube and i want to go frame by frame to see how long an average shot lasts in a fight scene because i swear we'll be measuring in single digit frames because it is a fucking editing mess but that ends up becoming funnier because it's like you have the implication of actions. It's like, oh, you hear, eh! and then you see like 14 different shots in like two seconds. And you're like, I guess she threw a punch. I guess I, I, I maybe made impact because I hear and like, okay, cool. I guess that happened. So Resident Evil Apocalypse, you know, that's a, that's a mess. And then it gets really boring somewhere like, end of first act beginning of second act it isn't until like the last third that it gets like really cacophonously stupid again and like that's when it's fun um i swear that there's a shot of mila jovovich like running through like this glass thing and there's a helicopter shooting at her that it makes me feel like tom paul ws anderson was like oh i saw someone playing code veronica x one time and i only saw the opening cutscene. so i think i'm just gonna steal that and put that wholesale in my movie um However, the real magic of Resident Evil Apocalypse is literally like in the last 10 minutes when they just say, fuck it, the main character has psychic powers now. Who cares now? She stares at a camera and a man bleeds out of his orifices. It's fucking comedic. I don't understand why they, in a Resident Evil sequel, this is literally just the second movie. They're like, eh, main character has superpowers now. Who cares? Whatever. Wait, Dorian, you probably have better experience with the Resident Evil series than I do. Maybe we're on par. I don't know. 
literally Wesker is the only one who has like superhuman powers and it's just like faster, right? Yeah. Like I think there are others in there. Like there's obviously um what's her name? Like Evelyn. Um Evelyn. from Resident Evil Seven, the new ones. Um, oh, I, I think she's got some shit like that, but yeah, for that's the like most still part, biohazard shit, like like yeah. still physical like mutations of flesh. Yeah, not yeah, so fucking yeah. psychic powers. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's mostly just Wesker as the as the as the fucky guy. Okay, I mean, so, and, and, Chris, and, and Chris can punch boulders. So. Okay, no, no, that's 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 still in line with like physical capabilities. <laughs> Um, oh yeah because you can just punch a boulder no problem exactly oh yeah no you, we can all punch a boulder we won't be able to you know you know we won't get far but like we could um <laughs> so however after this right she walks out and then she's confronted by all of these umbrella corp soldiers and you're like well she has psychic power she could probably just neo this shit and then stop every bullet aiming at her okay fine right but what happens is that the entire fucking movie, they're like, Umbrella is evil. Oh my god, there's nothing we can do with Umbrella. They suck so bad. We're gonna take them down. And then at the very end of the movie, every single other character who survived shows up dressed up as Umbrella in complete gear. They're in an Umbrella car. They're all certifiably Umbrella. And they're just like, oh yeah, Mila Jovovich, she's ours. We're Class Code 7, uh, Omega uh, Classified. And then they show cars and they take her out. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've seen every single one of this, these people in this entire movie. And you're telling me now they just work for Umbrella? no explanation no time frame of how far it was from the events of the entire movie you're just telling me that all these people just sent fucking applications to wesker and they're like hey um we saw what you did in raccoon city love your work um can we get hired please that do you have dental 401k child support please and they all just got hired and they grabbed me legit events and they get out of there i don't the ending of this movie is so fucking hilarious that it took this movie to another level of like, this still wasn't worth it. I didn't even like ironically enjoy myself entirely, but that ending is so batshit insane of like, logic is out the window, who cares now, that it just makes me laugh. And then they have the end of Heartache by Kill Switch and Gaze that's like, oh, I don't really care about this, man. But I like this one song. You know what, Resident Evil Apocalypse? You were still bad. I was about to say you were not that bad, but no, you're still bad. But at least I'm walking out thinking, wow, that was stupid. Let's see what happens next. And uh, no, no, Resident Evil Extinction is fucking terrible. This movie is so fucking boring. How do you... It's, it's funny because the jump from 2 to 3 is so drastic and it's, it's fucking hilarious, okay? So, Resident Evil Apocalypse is Raccoon City. Raccoon City gets nuked off of the face of the earth to stop the zombie invasion. But what happens is that instead now it's entirely Mad Max and zombies dried up the oceans because the t-virus killed the fishes i don't know don't question it um so now it's just mad max and the main protagonist has psychic powers and you would think that you know mad max with psychic powers and zombies all of that sounds like a great recipe for dumb shit um no it's surprisingly boring. I don't understand who thought was like, ah, yes. Uh, should we just have Mila Jovovich be out in the desert doing psychic powers and fighting shit? Oh, by the way, um, the main thing I've realized with all these movies of why they suck is that Mila Jovovich is a terrible actress. I, you know, maybe in the fifth sense, someone actually directed her well. Uh, but when you have your husband directing you, who's probably just off camera going, you're doing fine, honey. You're not going to get anything good here. Uh, she is terrible. This woman just looks... It looks like Kirsten Stewart studied all of the Resident Evil movies and said, that's what I'm going to do in Twilight. I'm sorry, Kirsten Stewart. You're probably a good actress now, but like, you know, we're not going to say that Twilight is a tour de force from you. Um, Resident Evil just is sunk by this woman because... Honestly, there were a couple of characters who basically are just cosplayers who are like I'm Jill Valentine. It's like you're just dressed up like Resident Evil 3 Jill Valentine. You're calling yourself Jill Valentine. Sure. Fuck it. Who cares? Why not? Let's just have fun. Um, oh, I forgot there was an Ashford doctor. I don't remember his name, but it's like, oh, my God, I recognize that that's an Ashford doctor. That's about it. I, that's it's really just going and pointing. It, oh, it's why people go to Marvel movies. They go and point like, oh, my God, it's that dude. I saw that dude in this other thing. So, like, uh, 
in Resident Evil, I think I kind of understand it just because it's just funny to see them bastardized. Like, if you ever go on Amazon and you search up a character's name, and it's like, okay, you know, hold on, I'll just do it right now. I'll just do it right now. Um, Amazon? Uh, Dorian, give me a famous character. Uh, any famous character? Any famous character that would realistically have a costume for Halloween. Uh, the Joker. Joker, okay. Joker costume. Yeah, yeah, no, if you look up Joker costume, this is perfect, by the way. You just look at it, and it's like, ooh, yeah, that is a look-alike. Every single person in a Resident Evil movie looks like a Halloween costume look-alike of the character that they're supposed to be. So it ends this extra level of, like, why is this even happening? And so Resident Evil Extinction just doesn't really have that. It brings a whole bunch of the other characters from the last movie. Uh, Carlos from Resident Evil 3 is there too. And it's like, okay, cool. You're Actually, you know what? I like him. I like him. Something about that man. He has the right charm to him. That's like, you know what? You're probably the only person that I'm willing to defend here. I think Claire Redfield is just like off screen introduced in this movie. And then Jill Valentine disappears in the third one, even though she was alive at the end of the second one. Who fucking cares? Okay. There's a scene where there's a whole bunch of crows on fire, and Mila Jovovich's psychic power sets all the crows on fire. There's zombie crows. I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. There's a scene where a zombie grabs a phone, and they're like, telephone, and he's just like looking at the phone. Oh, by the way, Sir Friendzone from Game of Thrones is here as well, and every single time that he shows up, I just like imagining that he's the exact same character, so he's just like, Khaleesi, those are the undead. They rise, and if they bite you, you'll turn into a zombie. Like I'm, I'm literally trying to pull anything that I can out of this movie to not give up because this is what happened back in 2007. This is, should probably be right. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I was about to say this should probably be included in that trio or four movies in 2007 that made me want to die because of how badly they sucked. I don't want to say that. I don't. I don't want to include Extinction in that because like Shrek three. X-Men 3, Spider-Man 3, like, those are all already bad movies. I don't need to add to the pile. It's not exactly like Resident Evil 1 and 2, you know, set me up for failure. Like, no, it was just the exact same shit the entire time. Uh, by the way, every single one of these movies, except the last one, which infuriates me, starts off with her going, my name is Atlas. And then she gives a recap of everything that's happened, and it's fucking comedic every single time. Because when you're mainlining these shits, it's the exact same speech almost every time. And it's like, everyone died, except they didn't die. Cue the screeching music to let you know this is a, a scary moment. It's like, oh my fucking god. Uh, so anyways, a Resident Evil Extinction is a mess. However, however, Resident Evil Extinction once again pulls off an ending that teases you for like some really good dumb shit so they've been cloning mila jovovich over and over and over and over again and now she has psychic powers so you just have an army of psychic bitches at your disposal that they're just trying to science out something i don't know i think because she bonded with the t virus that gave her psychic powers or something like that and they're like well if we can replicate her perfectly then we can save the world by getting rid of the t-virus i don't know but anyways through that mila jovovich fights sir friend zone after he injects himself with a t-virus because honestly if you're a scientist that works for umbrella chances are you're going to inject yourself with a t-virus at any point so she does that she kills him um and now there's just a billion mila joviches and she's like, oh, Wesker, I'm going to get you. By the way, I don't remember when they introduced Wesker. I think he was Extinction. I don't know. I just want to say that he was there the entire time because it makes me feel better. Uh, so then it gets to Resident Evil Afterlife. And now this shit is peak. Okay, well, okay, I'm not going to say it's peak because, like, the, the next one, Retribution, is, like, the best one. The next one is, like, so fucking terrible that it circles around to being really entertaining. This is, like, under the right step of... the this is the right step in the direction of being so bad that it becomes entertaining. So afterlife opens up with like 50 Mila Jovovich is taking down a resident evil. It's not resident evil an umbrella corporation. So another thing I want to bring up here, because I think it's fucking hilarious. Any single time that there's a main character that works for umbrella, 
it is almost guaranteed like you can flip a coin if they will shoot an underling that works for umbrella as well in that same scene because they didn't listen so like in this exact scene was what the moment it clicked for me and it had me cracking up i think wesker sees like 50 mila jovovich is running in and one dude's like mila jovovich is on floor 16 and wesker's like fire upon all of them and the guy's like that's going to kill our soldiers too and then wesker just executes him and then it's like fire on those people and the other guy's like, ah, ah, I'm not want to lose my job. Um, like, it's fucking comedic. So, anyways, um, naturally, because the idea of poorly CGIing multiple Mila Joviches was probably too much for the budget of this movie. By the way, it actually ends up getting an extra level of comedic when every single Mila Jovovich that's on screen with it, you can tell that they all have different lighting. So like, it's like, you already know, okay, they're going to CGI another Mila Jovovich in there. Like, that's fine. But you can tell that all of them had different light sources. So it looks so wrong, but it becomes fucking hilarious when you just see, like, you can see that the director's like, okay, honey, you're going to run in this direction and hold your gun and now you're gonna do that again and then we're gonna merge it and all of it just looks so unnatural it is hilarious like the first 10 minutes of this movie is probably the peak of the entire series okay so then after that um because they probably realized that they wrote themselves into a corner um they could have written no 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 i was about to say they probably could have written themselves out of this corner but do you want to or do you want to just say eh, ignore that uh, that's what they did, because basically all the Mila Joviches that took down the entire place start shooting at Wesker's helicopter, and Wesker's like, okay, perfect, I have a nuke set in that bomb, so it's just gonna kill every single Mila Jovovich. Congrats, that, that's, a loose, that's, that's, that's a loose tie that we tied up, cool, we're done. And then the real Mila Jovovich is inside the helicopter, and what happens is that this bitch is walking from one end of the helicopter, she has a gun in her hand, she's walking from one end of the helicopter all way to the other end where wesker is this bitch walks all the way there may i remind you she has a gun she walks all the way up there and then puts a gun up to his head and goes hey any last words you are telling me you have a gun you see the man who is in charge of umbrella that caused the end of the world and you are going to walk up close to him with a gun when you have a gun and you could have just shot him from a distance and then what happens? Wesker stabs her and is like, by the way, your psychic powers, that was another loose thread. We're done. Here you go. Whee! It is so fucking hilarious seeing how inept all of this is. By the way, this movie sucks. Um, if you just YouTube this entire beginning, it's probably just as insane and it translates well even without watching anything else. So highly recommended to just look up Resident Evil Afterlife beginning. Uh, by the way, this movie was also, uh, it wasn't shot in 3D, it just came out of 3D, apparently it was a post-process thing, but you can tell that they shot it like it's in 3D, so this adds this extra level of like, oh my god, you really thought you were doing something, huh? Uh, Chris Redfield is in this one as well, um, and I'm pretty sure that Chris Redfield was never going to be in these movies because he doesn't show up in any of them after this, but literally, again, Paul W.S. Anderson was walking near a GameStop in a mall and was like, ooh, Resident Evil 5, who's this guy on the cover? And then he saw a trailer, he's like, it's Big Axe Dude! Hey, oh my god, they got these zombies with the little tendril things, I'm gonna put that in my film! Which, by the way, this movie takes so much from Resident Evil 5, and it makes no fucking sense, because we've been dealing with zombies this entire time, apparently Las Plagas from, like, Resident Evil 4 and 5 show up, and it's like, what is even going on, and it just, it is this extra level of stupidity of seeing slow motion rain, and she uses sh uh, coins to load up her shotgun, and she's shooting the big manji from Resident Evil 5 with the axes, it's a cacophony. And it's so fucking stupid. And then at the end, Wesker goes full CGI. Like, I, I can't. I can't. This, this movie is just so fucking stupid that even when I think about it, it just gets dumber. Highly recommended. <laughs> now, Resident Evil Retribution, though. This is the movie that what the entire series should have been. Because Resident Evil Retribution is literally just like... You know what? We're going to give you what you want. Do you just want to see a mess of every single character that has ever been in a game? Here you go, okay? 
Because, like, let's let's look here, okay? We got Jill Valentine. We got Michelle Rodriguez back from the first movie. Even though she fucking died. She turned into a zombie and then died. I'll explain that in a second. Um, let me see. We got Ada Wong. Uh, Luther West, I think that was a, ga- a guy from the last movie. So, like, ignore him. We got Leon. We got Barry. We got Carlos coming back after, though, even though he died in the third one. We still got Wesker. Like, what the fuck is this movie? And then again, we're still dealing with the Halloween costume conundrum. So all of them look like, yeah, you're like a really good cosplayer. And then you remember that Resident Evil is actually literally on the title. You're like, why would you do any of this? Um... This movie completely gives up, okay? They are now underground, and they are going through different um, AI environments. It's like the big room in, like, Star Trek where it's like, oh, it's the holodeck. It's just different holodecks that they go in and fight. By the way, now there's two uh, Hammer dudes from Resident Evil 5, so that's fucking hilarious. Um, And it's just, they're literally like, you're just going to fight in New York now because the holodeck can do it. Okay, you're going to fight in Russia now because the holodeck can do it. Like, this movie is so fucking ridiculous. It is just every character you could ever think of from a Resident Evil game throwing into here. It's so fucking stupid. And it's, this is gold. This is gold. Um, there's even an opening scene that works backwards. It's an action scene that works like the trailer for Dead Island. And look, I am convinced now that Paul W.S. Anderson was probably like say so Paul W.S. Anderson and Mila Jovovich are married. I would like to believe that Mila Jovovich is like a big Resident Evil fan and she's been playing all these games, but he really hates these games. But all he knows is just what he's seen whenever he's walking by, whenever she's playing it. So he'll just be like, oh, is that that Leon dude? Okay, I guess I can do that. Oh, Resident Evil 5. Oh, you got that Chris Redfield dude. Okay. Hey, you got the little heart thing on Jill Valentine? Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, by the way, makes no sense. Jill Valentine rips straight from Resident Evil 5 in here. You see, you last see her in 2, then she disappears, and then she just comes back in 5. No explanation. Who fucking cares? It's comedic. This movie breaks me. This movie breaks me because every time I think about it, it's like, there's no way it was that stupid, was it? And then I think, no, wait, it was even stupider. Repeat that about 10 times the last time I saw it. Now the last one, Resident Evil, the final chapter. Um, This movie fucking sucked. This is the worst one. This is boring as hell. I don't want to talk about this one. Uh, This is the first time that I saw the Sony logo at the beginning, and I almost wonder if that had anything to do with it. I don't want to talk about this one. Uh, Piece of shit. Just stop it at Retribution. Never watch the final chapter. Um, Apparently you find out. Oh, wait, I didn't even get to explain how all these characters came back. There's a whole bunch of clones now. There is a shitload of clones. Everyone has a clone. You kill someone. Congrats. They have a clone. Now you have to kill all their clones. Clone, clone, clone. Ah, anyways, Resident Evil. (sighs) These movies fucking suck. I gained nothing from this except maybe seeing a whole bunch of cosplayers pretend to be characters from a series that I'm okay with. Uh, we're going to rank them. We're going to go five. So there's six in total. So five, four, two, one, three, six. These movies are fucking terrible. Now, Doreen, do you want to watch these? So here's what I'm going to say. And and then we're going to move on. Um, first of all, shout out to the passive pixels discord. Um, if you're listening to this and you're there, and that's most of you, uh, I would like you when you get to this segment and, and to this part specifically, <laughs> please tag Ed and uh, let him know you're worried. <laughs> let him know that there are better things out there that he can be doing with his time, because I think we need an intervention. Be very nice. Be very thoughtful in your tags, but let him know that he's loved, he's cared for, and he needs our help. This is just an elaborate cry for help. Please, someone. <laughs> please, someone. <laughs> Uh, no, I watched like half the first one. And it was so bad I turned it off, and I never thought to watch the other. So that that is my experience with this with this movie franchise series. So you're telling me you've never seen a petite woman fist fight nemesis? Unfortunately, not. No. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you haven't gotten to experience this. But I will be sending you the first ten minutes of Afterlife because you need to see how terrible this shit is. Everything that I've said is not covering it properly. Uh, by the way, all of these are still uh, shitting, shitty editing messes. Like, and then the last movie like gets even worse. It's just like they he specifically was like, I hate all of you, but like. Yeah, these movies, they're terrible. Um, if I had to give anything... Uh, oh, yeah, I have to give a score. Um, the entire Resident Evil franchise is... Um, 
<sighs> hatred out of 10. Uh, I don't even know what that means. I just It just feels right. Uh, my score would be a, while you were talking, I actually threw on a video of some guys opening up an ATM machine. Um, and they were trying to get into the ATM machine that they bought. It took, was really difficult. Like, that fucking thing would not open, for the love of God. Uh, but they finally did get in, and there was no money. And oh. just to see all that work and there to be no money, that was more entertaining than anything the Resident Evil movies could aspire to be out of 10. You haven't seen multiple Mila Jovovich's spliced together in the same scene terribly. Hey, Mila, Mila Jovovich is probably a better singer than she is a fucking movie star. Because Jesus a Christ. Singer? She's a, she's in um. There's a song. I'll I'll link it to you later. She's it's, she's actually pretty good. In it. I like that song a lot. But yeah. No, okay. P- right. Pucifer. Have you heard of Pucifer? No, I have not. Yeah, she's she's in a Pucifer song. So yeah. Okay, please. Okay, now continue because uh, I need to drink yeah. a lot of water after that. Yeah. So for, okay, let's. I'm gonna bang out a, a cut. Well, actually, how many do you have left? Sorry. No. Oh, um, eight or so. Okay. But that's yeah, the so thing. I'll... That's the thing. When I said nine, like I knew I was gonna bundle all those together. Right. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to bang together a few, bang out a few here. So, uh, I'm going to do some quick ones here cause I don't have too much to say about these cause we've talked about them so much on this show before. Mm. Uh, so let's just do these, get these out of the way quick. Uh, the Batman, I rewatched this because I got the 4k of it. Finally, the steel book, gorgeous steel book. Uh, yeah, I mean, this movie's still hot. I love it. It's an incredible 4k. It looks really fantastic on in 4k. It's visually appealing. Uh, cinematography is great and yeah I just still love this movie we have talked about this a lot there's uh, not a special episode but we do a big segment with uh, the lovely Sean Mason so refer back to that episode if you would like to hear more Uh, that's all I have to say about the Batman you got anything to add Um, I got the 4k as well got the steel book I plan on watching it again at some point however um, whenever my cousin was over I decided to show him the Batmobile segment in the theater room Oh my god. Oh my god. After that scene, my fingertips were actually vibrating. And it's like, I don't know if that's because of the way it was shot or it's the sound. My money is on the sound. Yep. I think so. Apparently, it's got a killer Atmos track. So I think you're good there. Oh boy, that Batmobile is hot. Oh my god. The sound design on that is so good. <laughs> All right. So it's still 9 out of 10. Love that movie. Want to give it a rating? <sighs> Dolby Atmos, man. Dolby Atmos. True Atmos out of 10. Awesome. All right. Green Knight. I got my Green Knight Steelbook, so I rewatched this one. Uh, look, we have a whole... Uh, is this one a special? No, I don't think this no, was a special no, no. episode either. Both of those were bootstrap special yes. episodes to main episodes. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, look, here's the nice thing about this one. This is one of the best 4K transfers I've ever seen, period. Like, this movie Ooh. looks absolutely fucking stunning. They absolutely murdered this transfer, and it looks incredible. Uh and the steelbook is really nice too. It's embossed and mm, just gorgeous. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this movie's great. I still love it. Uh, it's my second time watching it. Uh, but again, refer back to that episode uh, if you want to hear more. Fuck Barry Keegan, 8 out of 10. Um, I still have this 4K. My best friend, I was trying to get him to watch Lawrence of Arabia with me, but he had to go and have someone hit his car. So now he had to go shopping for a car. What an asshole. I can't believe he would go- do that to me. Um, so, uh, you know, we, uh, I don't know when I'm going to see this, this, this strapping young man. So I need to show him uh i was gonna show him lawrence of arabia but that movie's like four hours like i don't know if i can i'm ready to sit through it again but like you know green knight is one i want to show him who knows when i'm gonna get to it though uh okay oh score oh score um i was hearing that it's a nice transfer means that i was probably right in thinking that i never need to go to a standard theater if now my own theater room can probably break can probably beat out an actual nor hearing that it's a good transfer means that I no longer need to go to a standard theater if a nice transfer in my theater room is probably beating out a normal theater out of 10. There you go. That was a lot of rambling, whatever. Perfect. Uh, Band of Kino, Band of Brothers. Look, I'm, I'm still working through this. I'm not going to say much about this. I want to finish it all before I really get into it. I just finished episode seven. Uh, it's still good. It's still very good. Still enjoying it. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm going to elaborate more when I actually finish it. So that's all I have to say. Cool. You are going to enjoy those next few episodes. And I feel like that is going to end up bringing you up an extra level. At Excellent. Excellent. So still good worship out of 10. Uh, okay. Let's do, and then, you know what? Let's bang out a four block right now. So we're going to do some Korean, South Korean Kino cinema here. So we've got, <laughs> most of this is Bong Joon-ho, but there's also some Park Chan-woo flowing in here. Memories of Murder, Okja, Mother, and Thirst. 
Mm. Um, let's start with Mother, shall we? So mm. Mother is from Bong Jun ho uh, Of course, uh, not to be confused with Mother! Yes, yes. So this is actually just Mother. There's no explanation mark here. This isn't Darren and Fonsky's you wild ride. You didn't say it right. Darren Aronofsky. Fuck. This no, is no, I meant Bo- his movie. I meant you didn't say his movie right. Mother! Yeah, right. there we go. That's uh, Bo- I recognize Bong what you're talking about now. <laughs> but yeah, this is Mother from uh, Bong Jun ho who is the director of, of course, Parasite and many other movies, which I'll be talking about in a minute here because I dedicated a nice big chunk to him for these last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is probably my, um, I don't know. So this isn't my least favorite uh, Bong Joon-ho movie I've seen. Uh, Snowpiercer. Uh, I think Snowpiercer is fine. Um, I didn't love that, but it was good. Mother is definitely better than that, but I also feel like it's not as it's not as effective as some of his other work, especially compared to a movie I'll be talking to talking about at the end of this segment, uh, because they're both kind of similar detective stories. And that one's just so much fucking better. But this is still very good. Um, basically, a kid gets accused of um, like this kid who's really stupid and like actually just not smart at all. He's been babied by his mother all his life. Uh, and he's not very intelligent. He gets accused of a murder that he didn't commit. So she needs to kind of like basically set him free, like figure out how to investigate and try to figure out what happened and why he's being accused and what actually happened to this girl that uh, was murdered. Uh, it's good. Very good. A lot of twists and turns I didn't expect. Uh, it's well acted. It, it's a little bit dull at times. I feel like it's just not as engaging as some of his other work. Um, but, you know, hey, it's still very well worth watching. Uh, Definitely something I'd probably watch it again after I've been away from memories of murder for a while because that was just so fucking incredible. Um, And I like the message of that movie more. But uh, yeah, this was still very solid. Now, who hasn't been accused of murder? You know, the the cat's the first stone. (laughs) Exactly. Continue. That's all I got. All right. So that's a uh, that's a seven, uh, seven out of ten for me. Uh, I'll talk about Thirst next. Now, Thirst is the one only one on here from uh, Park Chan-woo, who Mm -hmm. is the director of the old old boy, the handmaiden. Um, all of that stuff. Uh, this one, again, I didn't love it, but it was still really good. Uh, Song Kang Ho is quickly becoming one of my favorite actors and certainly one of my favorite, certainly probably my favorite foreign actor. Like this dude is just incredible in everything he's in. Um, and again, he's really fucking good here. Um, I think this movie gets some bonus points for just being a vampire movie. That's not complete and utter shit, I guess, because Mm -hmm. it seems like there's so many vampire movies that are just trash. Um, and this one's pretty uniquely done and it's cool. Basically priest tired of his life. You know, he wants some, he just wants to kind of kill himself. So he goes and like undergoes this like experimental procedure, which he knows will kill him. doesn't kill him, turns him into a vampire. And that's our movie. Um, again, who there's a lot in there. Yes. Um, like all Park Chan Wook, this movie is incredibly horny, like incredibly horny. Um, you get lots of shit that like, I'm just like, okay, I don't. I don't need to see toe sucking. Thank you, Park Chan Wook. I, ah. I know you like the toes, but no, I'm good. So there's a lot of that shit. That was in there for Tarantino that's... to put his name on it. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino presents a Bonchu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is Tarantino's favorite movie of all time, clearly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was still really good. I still enjoyed it. Uh, there's definitely a lot to mull on here. Um, and I really did like the ending. So there were, there was definitely a lot of positives here. So another seven out of 10 for me. I got nothing. Go, 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 on, go on. Cool. All right. And now we're going to talk. <laughs> now we're going to talk about Okja. Um, mm-hmm. Okja is interesting. So this is our good old friends at Netflix here. Um, this <laughs> is also a mostly English language movie. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's still some South Korean in here. Like the, like the main character is South Korean and it kind of starts in South Korea, but it's, it's a lot more, uh, they go, they end up going to America in it and stuff. Uh, first of all, listen to this cast. Fucking Tilda Swin- Swinton, Paul Dano, Jake Gyllenhaal, Lily Collins, Steve Ewan. So many fucking good names in this movie. You really had to stop yourself from putting Jake Gyllenhaal at the top, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. I swear to God, they're like, he's like, he probably read this role and he's like, okay, how do you want me to like do this? And Bong Joon-ho was probably like, oh, just, uh, you know, do, uh, do however you want. And Jake's like, okay, I'm just come to work drunk every day. That's my character's motivation. And and I swear to God, like it's the most it's the weirdest fucking performance I've ever seen from him. And I can't like it's almost overacted to a degree, but it's so fucking bizarre that I can't help but appreciate it. Obviously, I'm a John Hall simp, too. Yeah, I know. Like, it, For you saying that it's the weirdest one, knowing how you've probably followed a lot of his filmography, it's like, oh, OK, there's he's already a weird man. So, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, this one's just fucking bizarre. I have no idea what he was doing with this one. <laughs> um, but, so, uh, this movie, a lot of people don't like it. I don't know, man. I really thought it was fucking great. Now, the message is a little on the head, and I do agree with that. It's very, very, like, anti-meat kind of thing. We're get, we're going into those kind of messages, and I understand that that's kind of like, look, I'm going to eat a fucking cow. The cow can fucking cry and look me in the eye, and I'm going to eat that fucking medium rare burger later that night. I don't give a shit. Wait, but, a Korean movie on the nose? No way. No way. Yeah. <laughs> no way. I, I, I'll never believe that. Yeah. Oh, I totally forgot. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito is in this as well, too. So, Wait, shout out to him. Oh. Um, oh. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I really ended up enjoying this movie. Paul Donald's great here. Again, I fucking love Paul Donald. I'm becoming nearly as much a simp for him as I am Jake, Jakey G. He's a great actor. I love him and everything he's in. And, yeah, this was just, I thought, really well done. Really well made. The creature, uh, his name is Okja himself, the big super pig, they call him. Absolutely okay. adorable. Absolutely adorable. I love him to pieces. I want to hold him, and I want one for myself. So, uh, great movie. Loved it. Eight out of ten. Um, as advice to anyone, if you name something super pig, then that implies the existence of super bacon. So, if you don't want him eaten, probably don't name him super uh, tasty animal. Like, don't do not do that. <laughs> no kidding. Eh? All yeah. right. And then the final one in this lovely South Korean kino block is Memories of Murder. Um, Bong Joon-ho again. Uh, this is his, um, I don't know if this is his first movie, but I think it's like either his second or first movie. It's a very early movie on for him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically, so in South Korea, they had a Zodiac copycat killer. And he's one of the, like he's the, I think he was actually the first known serial killer in South Korea. And this is his story. And this movie's fucking incredible. I actually thought this movie, and you know me, the Jake Gyllenhaal simp, but I think this movie is better than fucking Zodiac. Like, it's so, so goddamn good. Again, Song Kang-ho is in this and is just incredible in this role. Bong, Bong Joon-ho has a really amazing talent for being able to take a movie and make it... How do I explain this? To take a movie that's very serious, very dark, but also, like make it lighthearted enough and funny that it, it doesn't feel that way. Like he's good at mixing tones and keeping things like light footed, but at the same time, there's really dark, serious shit going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like he's done that in all his movies. And in this one, it's just perfectly on display here. A and yeah, this movie is just, like I said, it's, it's expertly made. It's the the way it keeps you kind of guessing the entire thing. Again, it's based off a true story. So, I mean, if you know the story, you look it up. You'll kind of know where things are going with it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a fascinating, fascinating look at this, basically, the serial killer. And the ending is just fucking brilliant. And there's a line. I won't say it, obviously, but it just sticks with me still. And uh, it's so, so well done. And I don't know if that's true, if that actually happened. But mm -hmm. if it did happen, that's fucking really cool and if it's not then he did a good job adding that in because i thought that was a really good cap to the movie so really good shit uh i like that movie a lot and uh, i really really highly recommend that to anyone who's like a fan of those kind of like serial murder mysteries uh and you're okay with subtitles this is a must watch uh, i'm not even gonna give it a timestamp. fuck it i'll just throw it in here and uh, dang it rampa v3 like i, I watched more uh, I lasted even less like I got like 10 minutes in and it was like, here's your cursor icon to move. And I was like, ah, <laughs> no. And so I watched the intro to be like, OK, these are all the characters. Now let's skip forward to the comic trial at the end. Um, you know, by the way, I guess uh, I'm going to do this really quickly. Uh, that big twist in the first trial is like, oh, wow, that's actually kind of cool. That's it. That's that's all I'm going to give um, anything that you well, no, no. Fuck it. Now I actually do have to put this down as a timestamp now because uh, I know that you'll talk a lot about B3. So continue, I guess. Fuck. Yeah, yeah and you're definitely going to have to timestamp this now. Uh, V3, did you finish watching? So did you watch the entire thing of V3 or just no, part of it? Or what did... I've just still done only in the first trial. Okay, okay. So I'm going to talk spoilers then. So, okay, first of all, Memories of Murder is a 9 out of 10, by the way. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. Um, So wrap that up. Uh, okay, V3 spoilers. I'm going to go in three, two one yeah coyote fucking dying that way breaks my fucking heart man i the way that game opens for me so it was really it was part frustrating because i was like oh they're finally doing a female protagonist that's a cool idea like, <laughs> maybe maybe it won't be as like fucking weird with some of the weeb shit and like the first youtube comment was exactly that oh look yeah. a female protagonist. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, I remember like, okay, here's the thing with Danganronpa. And like, when you're playing the game, um, you, I kind of like you, 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 by the end of the trial or by, like, by, by the time you're picking the murderer in 99% of the cases, I'd be like, okay, it's you. Like I figured it out. I've got it. Like you did it. Maybe not. Maybe I don't know entirely how you did it yet. And they're going to explain that, but you definitely did it. In this one, I was so dumbfounded. I couldn't figure it out. And I'm sitting there at the screen, like trying to pick who. And I'm like, okay, uh, Shirichi. No, it's not you. Uh, uh, you. And I started guessing random people. And I remember I, got, I was getting mad. I'm like, fuck, is it me? And I click it. It's like, oh, that's right. I'm like, what? And I just I could not. I couldn't, I couldn't connect in my brain. That twist really fucking got me. And it upset me because it's I really like Kaidi. Uh, I thought Kaidi was a good character. And I was like, God damn it. Like, you fucking cunts. It made me really fucking angry. And I didn't like Shuichi that much either. I thought he was lame. So I'm like, no, you're going to make me be him now? That's fucking stupid. And then, you know, the game just gets even crazier from there on. But yeah, which I won't talk about yet if you're going to watch it. But uh, yeah, so uh, Kaidi's a uh, good shit. And I'm very sad. And her death was gruesome, too. Like, Jesus Christ, fucking ugh. I still like it's, that death. It's so. weird. You say gruesome, but like any single time, like I look at it in these deaths, it's like, yeah, that was a kill, I guess. I don't know. Like it, it still feels like they kid glove it up way too much where it's like, oh, I guess this would be M rated. Sure. I guess. Like, I feel like this would just be easily a teen thing. Whatever. That's fine. You're just American into desensitized violence, clearly. That's I mean, well. obviously. Like, if you're not <laughs> ripping open someone's chest cavity and I can see their heart literally beating and you don't piss in it, like, is that even really an R? <laughs> no shit. Uh, oh, uh, another right. thing, though. It's actually kind of funny seeing this compared to Danganronpa 1 and 2. And you're like, oh, yeah, Danganronpa 1 and 2 were fucking PSP games that were ported yes. twice before they got to PS4. And then you see this is like, oh, yeah, this was built with a Vita and a PS4 in mind. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, actually, it does look a lot better uh, visually. And, and funny enough, it actually runs like shit on the Switch. So shout out Nintendo. <laughs> um, blessed be Nintendo. Blessed be Nintendo. Yeah, so yeah, V3, very good. Uh, fuck it. I'm going again because we, we invoke their name. Uh, Mario Party Superstars and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, uh, the boys in the Discord were like, let's get some Mario going. How about that? Uh, Mario Party Superstars. Um it feels cathartic to be an asshole for like almost 30 minutes to an hour, just unfettered. Just what is the meanest shit that I can say? And then not having my brain go, yeah, but you shouldn't say that. No, it's Mario Party. I'm going to be mean as fuck. And then now I have the power of technology on my side to even be more of an asshole. Uh, yes. So I had my switch connected to the streaming card. We were talking through the voice channel on the discord. And of course, because I was streaming it through there, I had the ability to screenshot things. So I would just screenshot people losing like, hi, you're in fourth place. We're going to immortalize the fact that you suck at this game. And just every single thing I was saying was just like personally to try to get someone angry. And there's just something about Mario Party that is so conducive for that. Anyone who I played with, I, I don't want to apologize. Um, I, I would rather apologize to you one on one. So none of you know that I apologized, at least, you know, to each other. Um, but at the same time, I will do it again and again and again. And if you stop playing with me, I would understand. But at the same time, fuck you. Uh, Mario Party Superstars is uh, hell spawn on Earth out of 10. Um, Dorian, is there anything you want to say about Mario Party and how you should probably get it so then you can also say some mean shit to people and then have it all be like, yeah, we're still fine afterwards, though. No, make a new part, new Mario Party game, Nintendo, you lazy this pricks. Is, this is the new Mario Party. This is the new Mario Party. No, this make a new one. Be, new new mini gold. games, new story, you fucking lazy. Yes, they've done that. Oh, a, a new story. New so <laughs> Well, you no. know what I mean. You know, <laughs> I hate you. I hate, I want to see Mario get golf clubbed by Birdo. <laughs> and I want Yoshi to go on a very introspective mission and then Bobby realize Luigi. violence is not the way. Be Luigi, not Yoshi. No, no, that's going to be the DLC. Um, okay. <laughs> who's the Abby? Who's the Abby of the Mario universe? No, Birdo. Birdo. Oh, Birdo? Uh, yeah, that's what oh. I'm saying. Birdo's going to golf club uh, Mario. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, fuck Mario Party. That's all did I, I even give this a score? Oh yeah, I did. Hell Spawn. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We then went to Smash Bros. Uh, I what can you really say about Smash Bros? I feel like this is just here because we've never brought it up. So it's just like Smash Bros. You know what? I'm just gonna go through my history. That, that's about it. Um, so Smash sixty four played it i found kirby and i liked kirby because i was a dumb child i was like four or five that didn't understand what the um what the up b was as a third jump so kirby having multiple jumps was like oh perfect my stupid child brain understands this so it's like i can survive and get kicked off and come back no problem um melee uh smash bros melee i think might have been like the first gamecube game that i bought with my own money actually no i even bought my gamecube with my own money they dropped it to 100 bucks it was right after like my sixth or seventh birthday and i was like oh yes i'm going to buy a gamecube because i like nintendo so i bought that i bought melee i bought a memory card and um what will forever haunt me for the rest of my life is that they gave me uh ocarina of time master quest and i remember playing it and getting into the deku tree and then not knowing what a zelda game was so i didn't understand that fire could burn things or the part of the dungeon where you're supposed to jump down and break the spider web underneath i didn't understand that real life logic could apply in a video game so i was like i'm a dumb kid i don't know what this is i'm too stupid for this and then i just stopped playing and then like fast forward two or three years i got rid of it and i have no idea where it is and i will forever regret not having that uh bonus uh info i used to have the zelda collector's edition that had ocarina of time and majora's mask and the first one and um adventures of link and a demo for Wind Waker. I used to have that. And then I got rid of that too. So double stupidity for what are very rare games on GameCube. I hate myself. Um, let's see. What was it? Oh, Smash Bros. Uh, I then got a Wii and th- checked Smash Bros. Dojo every single day before going to school to be right there for the next drop of characters. That website was my fucking life. Uh, got it. I still enjoyed it. Subspace Emissary is fucking gold. I love the Subspace Emissary. That is, I really wish we got another one because just this silent crossover of all Nintendo characters that I got to see Snake save Peach. Where else am I going to get that except Smash Bros? I fucking love the Subspace Emissary and I just want to heap more praise on it, but we're going to move on. Um, I bought a Wii U for Smash 4, so we can probably probably just leave that there uh and now we get smash bros ultimate this is probably the one i played the least of and it makes me really sad because it is really good i think the last time i was really consistent about playing it was 2019 because i had my switch at work and during my lunch breaks i would just play it but that was my hack switch so like all that data is just stuck on there now um, I have my Switch OLED. I can't transfer over my save. So I literally just still have like five characters in the game. But Kirby's one of them, so I don't care. I'm covered. Um, I have been a Kirby main basically pretty much this entire time. He is a little lovable ball, and I don't like him. Um, so yeah, that's it. Smash Bros. Ultimate. Fun game out of 10. Dorian, tell me. Smash. Take this wherever you'd like. Yeah, those are fun games. I never love them, but they're always a good time to play with people. Uh, I've never been particularly good at them, so it's just, you know, whatever. It's casual party shit. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd much prefer Mario Kart. Like, if I'm going to play a casual Mm -hmm. Nintendo sports game or whatever, multiplayer game, I've always been a Mario Kart guy. So that was always my go-to, but I would play some Smash. It's it's fine. Mario Kart fun as well. Um, is a series for you? Did, it, did none of them really grab you, or is it always just no. been like, no? Yeah, I, I, I honestly, Ultimate's probably the one I played the most. Like, I, <gasps> I actually definitely, when I first got it for the Switch, I put some time into it, but that was uh, that was it. I played the 64 one a bit, too. Uh, the GameCube one, I basically didn't play any of, and then the Wii, the Wii U ones, I really didn't touch, so, yeah. Mm. GameCube one was probably the one I put the most time into. I did all 52 challenges in that game. I unlocked every character. I did so much of the adventure mode. And then, of course, I take my GameCube and my memory card to it, side of the Lord, and my cousin deletes my save. <laughs> and I eternally hate that man for doing that because he also deleted my save for Pokemon Gold that had two level 100 Pokemons. And... um. 
I wish nothing but jihad onto that man. Um, a fatwa and any other sort of thing possible to wish violence upon someone. Um, so yeah, Smash Bros. Ultimate is now I'm reminiscing about anger out of 10. <laughs> yeah, fun games. They're like a 7 out of 10 for me, for Ultimate anyways. Alright, carry on, because I think I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, we're oh no, oh, no, I've got two more. Okay, actually, that's perfect. So we'll bang out these two. Okay. Uh, let's do the let's do the Coen Brother movies. Uh, okay. So Raising Arizona and Blood Simple. Uh, we'll start with Blood Simple. I actually watched that late last night. On the good old Criterion channel, streaming. Good stuff. Uh, this is my least favorite Coen Brothers movie. Uh, mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. There's not, it's not a bad movie. It's very... I, so This is was made in 1984. This is the Coen's first movie they worked on and did. Um, I think just one of them directed it, but they both wrote it. Um, it's still really well made. The, the problem I have with this movie specifically, I feel like the Coen brothers are kind of known for having really interesting characters in all their movies. Like they're always something like they're just unique. They're really well acted. There's something really like special. I find about their character work in most of their movies. And in this one, I really didn't care about any of them. They were all just so dull and kind of lifeless to me. The story itself was, was good. Like it was an interesting revenge plot and kind of like the, the dark comedy. And it has a lot of like, the Coen Brothers staples you could definitely see the influence there and you know some of their later work and how they're just getting their chops and their teeth in but mm. uh yeah this one just didn't hit for me because I just couldn't really like the characters just they, they were all very flat and one-dimensional to me and it just kind of hurt the movie so uh I definitely enjoyed it uh, I wish I could have enjoyed it more but uh it is what it is and uh happens sometimes so it's a solid six out of ten in the timeline of their filmography what was this their first or i believe so yeah oh okay all right that's fine understandable then yeah and that's exactly like i'm not gonna hold it too hard against them and it's still a good movie like for your first movie it's not bad at all so definitely enjoyable um and then raising arizona so this one was a lot more fun uh starring nicholas cage of course uh francis mcdermott's here too as she always is in the coen brother movies and of other fine fine actors in this mm-hmm. uh this was just fun man like nicholas cage is just having a blast here i think this was probably right before right around his uh, action superstar like <laughs> surgeon basically mm-hmm. um and he's just basically playing like this just more moronic guy who constantly is in jail and gets himself into shit and just makes the poorest life decisions and you know, when him and his girlfriend can't have a kid, what's the idea? Well, let's just go steal a baby from somebody who has six. They surely won't miss one, will they? We've all been so. there, okay? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of life experiences that we've all just gone through. Yeah, it's the most ridiculous plot ever. But, I mean, it's the Coens. They make it work. Fun soundtrack is normal. A lot of country and, uh, like, uh, folk. Folk, actually, the word I'm looking for. Folk influence in there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not top tier Coen's by any mean to me, but I mean, it was a lot of fun and you could definitely do wrong on like a rainy Saturday afternoon. So good stuff. Seven out of 10. <sighs> Again, seriously, when am I going <laughs> to look, this is a double whammy. The Nicholas cage is more likely no, no, not even Cohen probably has a shorter, a shorter filmography I'm going to get through the Coen's most likely if I ever get through this, that's how I'll get to this sooner, but also <sighs> I'm sensing that a lot with you. <laughs> I just I, there's so many things that like if i could just have a random generator to remind me of like just the topics in this show like oh man i'd be able to knock this out pretty well but a lot of times whenever i'm just sitting there i'm like hmm i hate myself let's watch resident evil it trust me i know <laughs> all right um and then i'm just gonna bring this because you brought up uh, adam scott earlier uh, let's just uh, t- and that, that was a while ago, but we're going to throw it here. It, it's uh, we'll fine. Talk- Transitions are hard. Yeah. We'll talk about severance. Um, I finally mm-hmm. finished it. So the first season is done. Nine, all nine episodes of the Tim Apple exclusive series. Ben Stiller, Adam Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, Ben Stiller. This was an interesting show. It took me until the final two episodes. I wasn't completely sold on it. Now, with TV, I think you know, and I'm, I don't know, I'm sure I've mentioned this on the show before to the audience. I'm very, very picky on TV. If something doesn't really capture me and I'm like, oh, man, this is stellar and I want to continue watching, I will dump it. I am not going, if a show is good, I will not watch a second season of it. Good, just being good is not good enough for me. And True. the closest example I can give you to that is if if I was watching Mr. Robot live after season two, I probably would have dumped it. 
I would have killed very, you. I yeah. would stab you. <laughs> I'm very, very picky when it comes to TV. So this was honestly on the chopping block for me until the final two episodes. The final two episodes, though, were really good, especially the finale. The finale is absolutely outstanding. It is so well done. Like it is a, one of the most memorable finales for for like just a regular season, a series, but just to end a season. Um, I've seen in a long ass time. So I got to give him full props for that. And it definitely drew me in and I'm definitely going to be back for season two now. Um, and it's just cool. It's a very unique show you know, I, I, mystery box is a negative term. Um, so I'm not going to use it, but it does feel very, there is a big mystery to the center of this show. I'm assuming they have it mapped out and they know where they're going with it. And it seems like they're smart enough to like already be, you know, showing that they know what they're doing with it, which is good. So this is a lost situation where they're making shit up as they go. Um, but this is, yeah, this was really well done. Uh, and I definitely can't wait for season two, which is probably going to be a year away now, but, uh, we'll get to it eventually. There's an overall plan for the show. I have an end point in mind and I intentionally didn't plan it season by season because I wanted to be flexible enough that we could get there in two seasons or six seasons. Um, so that's what Google tells me, but now who are they even speaking to? Um, oh, Ben's really? Wait, no, no, hold on. Uh, Ben Stiller's the creator of the show. What? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, he's the creator, executive producer, directs a couple of the episodes. I I think I just glitched out. I don't... Uh, Uh, You wouldn't think so. Yeah, you wouldn't, like, watching this, it does not think... If you watch this, you you would not have any idea Ben Stiller had anything to do with this, because it doesn't feel like something he would make, but it's really good. So Okay, uh, creator Dan Erickson, I think, is the person who said that. So, um, you know what? Okay, we will see whenever I... God damn it, I gotta stop saying this. Uh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Twin Peaks is yeah, still so- here. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll wrap it up with the score. We're gonna go... Uh, we'll go 7.5 out of 10 on it. Uh, really, really good first season. Yeah. Uh, minor update on Twin Peaks. Uh, still enjoying myself. I log la- log lady is life. That's it. I'm still I still not even done with season one. God, I will get there. I will get there. Maybe stop watching Resident Evil and watch some Kino. No. <laughs> Fuck. Let me watch stupid shit. Ah. Hey, look, I've been doing really good on movies though. We just haven't really hit them yet because you know we've been dominating with dumb shit right now. Um. Okay, uh, is it my turn now? Uh, no, I Are got Twin done? Peaks. I, yeah, I got Twin Peaks out of the way. Like, I just look. I'm still enjoying myself. I'll get there. How many do you have left now? Then like, I think or... I have one episode left of season one. No, no, no. How many topics do you have left? Oh, okay. Uh, one, two, six. Oh yeah, yeah. I've only got uh, I only got five. So you're ahead of me. Go. Okay, cool. Predator. It, sometimes you just have the manly urging you to go wrap yourself in mud and then you have the hardiest manly yell from your belly. And this is what Predator put in me. I just really want to go get naked, roll into some mud, and then light a fire and just yell like Tarzan now. And this is what Predator has done to me. Uh, Predator is fucking great. This movie is awesome. Um... The Predator itself looks awesome. Uh, the ending of Arnold Schwarzenegger fist fighting the Predator and the Predator having like a lot of confidence just being like, I will fucking destroy you. What's wrong with you? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to even fight me? Is some of the manliest shit ever. This movie is just testosterone put onto a 4K disc, by the way. Very nice transfer. It's not, not going to be like, great or anything it's like yeah you know what this is a 4k transfer nothing too special it, it works um but man like this movie is so much fun i don't know if there's anything further i can go into that it's just very fun a lot of testosterone fist fight at the end is the moment where i went yeah this movie just got kicked up an extra level yeah i need to see it it's actually a huge uh gaping hole Damn, in photography. so uh it's on my watch list uh it's one when I say I will get to it eventually, I mean sometime probably, you know, in a reasonable time frame, not 10 years like you. So Correct. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will get to it eventually. It's on my watch list. 
Okay, no, never mind. Okay, no, no. I felt bad, but then I stopped feeling bad. I was the I sold another PS5 to someone, and I saw that my Predator 4K was just sitting there. I'm like, ah, I could probably list this for sale, or I could literally just hand it to you, and it's out of my house. It's a very good movie. I don't hate this. It's just like, uh, if I had like an overflow shelf, sure, but I'm like. Eh. Predator's very good. It's not going to be one of my favorites, though. And I was like, you just want this? And he's like, yeah, sure. Why not? Here you go. So when you were saying you wanted to see him, like, oh, fuck. I should just drop it. I should have just dropped it in the box for you. But then I realized that we're not shipping that box anyways for, like, to like September anyway. So, like, who cares? Yeah, um, and it's 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 actually on uh, Disney Plus out here, too, which obviously it still won't beat uh, a regular 4K disc, but Disney Plus streaming is very good. So at least it's one of the better ones. Is it? Okay, hold on. Is, 4K, is it 4K? Yeah, it'll be 4K, HD, Dolby Vision, all that shit. So. Ah, I'm fucking jealous, man. You guys have the good Disney Plus, and we it's just have Hulu. Literally the worst stream. Oh, well, is it? Yeah, no, I think it might be the worst of the major streaming services in quality now. Yeah, I heard it is for you guys. No, we get a lot of the Hulu shit on Disney Plus, and uh, thank God, because, yeah, it's great on there. Mm. Uh, Predator is going to be just straight up testosterone out of 10. It's a, I'll be back to watch you soon out of 10. No, it's get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! I'm Detective John Gimble, you idiot! <laughs> Uh, what do I want to go next? Let's go. Well, all right. Since we've been talking so much about Resident Evil, let's talk about a movie that clearly uh, Resident Evil drew a lot of inspiration from. And that's Chinatown. So Chinatown. <laughs> uh, so okay, good, good swerve. Holy <laughs> shit! Oh my god, I was on. I was on. I was like, what is he talking about? And then I just you, you, you ever seen those people who wipe out really hard on jet yeah. skis? That's what I like right now. <laughs> Good so one. Chinatown, yeah, that this, I mean, like, this is a stone cold classic. I mean, obviously it's hard to, it's hard to imagine. But, okay. Roman Polanski being a piece of shit aside. And yeah, if you hate the movie for that reason, fair enough. No, no harm, no foul. I understand. But that aside, it's hard to think of somebody watching this movie, not coming away thinking it's fucking great because it's just, it's timeless, man. It's a stone cold classic. Jack Nicholson, I mean, you, you, I sometimes forget about what an amazing actor he actually is, and this is just proof of that. Like, he's so good here. Yeah. The vibe to this movie, it just yeah. feels... You just want to start chain-smoking while you're watching this movie. Yeah. That's exactly just, what uh, I said, man. <laughs> yeah, it's just those perfect kind of, you know, like... Uh, ne- neo-noir. Dirty neo-noir vibes Actually, no, to it. no, never mind. That's noir. That's just straight-up yeah. noir. Never mind. Yeah, just yeah, straight-up noir, not neo. Um, just... The great, great, great vibes, and uh, the fact that there's a sequel to this, and I found that out, is disgusting. And I can't, no, I can't believe that. Unlearn it, <laughs> yeah, unlearn it. But this was just so, so well made, uh, well worth the wait. I'm glad I finally got a chance to watch it, and yeah, it just like I, I just like watching this made me want to fucking play La Noir again. The game. Yes. <laughs> like, I just love this style so much. I wish they did. Wish Hollywood did more stuff like this, like just kind of cool. Yeah noir stuff where they're detectives they're solving crimes the ending to this movie is fucking perfect it's so well done and it just like it just loops it all together so well it's heartbreaking and it's just mm, so good so i mean yeah if you know i'm sure you've heard probably watched chinatown if you're listening to this most people have but if you somehow haven't you're like me and you've been putting it off absolute classic hopefully this gets a 4k transfer in the near future because i will snag it uh, it's actually there is a 4K cut out there. Of course, it's only on fucking Apple. Oh, hold so on, hold on. Uh, good news, good news. Heat is getting a 4K transfer. So, like, I'm sorry, no, it's getting a 4K copy. Like the transfer already is done. You know, blah, yes. blah blah blah. But it's been done it for a while. Yeah, it's been done for a while. Disney's just been dragging their feet releasing that shit. But I knew that. So, hope is, did they actually announce a release date for it finally? No, dude, I was already able to pre-order a Steelbook. Oh. Nice. Where where is this? Where uh, Through... Best Buy? Oh shit. Okay, good. I got to uh, look more into that then. Uh, so like great. you know one of those things where it's like a streaming only option and then getting a 4K disc after. I'm not gonna say abandon all hope, but like there's some hope. Yeah, for sure. I think Chinatown's famous enough that it'll get there eventually. I mean, mm-hmm. Chinatown's arguably more famous than Heat, so I think it'll get there eventually. Mm, um, I don't. But yeah, don't incredible film. That. It's close, but I, I think yeah. I think I think Chinatown's just got some of that kind of history to it. Heat's don't get me wrong, Heat's one of my favorite movies of all time. I'd rank Heat above Chinatown. I just mean in terms of uh, prestige and stuff like that. But no, whatever. you're not wrong. It's just like I, I feel like that's just a coin flip. It just depends. It on is where for sure. You are. Yeah, that, that's probably true. 
Either way, they should both get 4K transfers is what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, dude, everything uh, should be getting a 4K transfer. Even yeah. shitty movies should be. Dude, Resident <laughs> Evil, all those movies are in 4K, okay? If I that know, can be in disgusting. 4K, the bar is already pretty low. I know. That's just disgusting. Dude, Anyways, I China... need to see that shitty dog from the first movie in 4K. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. The liquor is horrible. Nine out, <laughs> nine out of ten, uh, Stone Cold Classic. Uh, it's uh, definitely better than Resident Evil. Uh, I mean, what isn't? Um, Chinatown. Oh, wait, no, no, I, I wanted to ask you this. You can go into spoilers, but count okay. it down. Yeah. But I think I just, we can speak about it vaguely. How about that ending? Yeah, yeah, it's like, I I, I didn't know particularly how it was going to end. And just, I, I kind of had the feeling that it wasn't going to be a very happy ending. Um, So I won't say much more than that. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's definitely a lot and uh it uh but i think it just ties kind of the whole movie together perfectly mm-hmm. and it really kind of shows you just just kind of the city the, just, just just the area he, the city he life. works in yeah the city life the area he works in and just uh how shitty his job is <laughs> it, it, honestly i was like this is a good movie this is a good movie and then we get to that ending and my brain was like yeah Oh, you fucking done it. You created yeah. a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 incredible and uh definitely kicks it up a notch that ending in my opinion because it's so it's so perfect. They they just mm-hmm. absolutely nailed it. One of the like just the screenplay too. Like apparently the screenplay is famous for like just in general like it's thought of really? as one of the best screenplays of all time and that doesn't really surprise me. Like it's just r- rock solid. Like just just perfect writing and tight and mm, just great. You see, the weird thing is, is that whenever I think about screenplays, I just like the idea of like, oh, OK, well, OK, sorry, I don't like the idea. What I mean is that in my brain, whenever someone says that it's a good screenplay, my brain is like, OK, so that screenplay is very good about uh, giving you the idea of what is put onto the film. Like, I get that. But then my brain starts thinking, uh, is it weird that to think of comparing screenplays my brain thinks do you take in consideration the movie like if you read the screenplay and then you compare it to a movie do you then go oh well the screenplay wrote it very well and it was translated well to the movie like what is the criteria of a good screenplay like that's what i'm now wrecking my brain on yeah for sure it's not like an exact science that you can compare one oh, no no one. of course of course but um, like but my brain is like what are the like some foundations in a screenplay that makes someone go oh yes that's a good one like is it the fact that when you read it you can picture it in your head or is it like reading it and then comparing it to the final product and being like ah yes that's perfect that's a good question i i'd honestly have to like i, I don't read i've never oh really no no read, i know i know trust me I, we have no answers it's just more yeah. questions of like no that's, it, a, that's a good question that? you could that's, that's like, that'd be a good question like to ask somebody who actually knows like hey what actually makes screenplay tick like what would what would jump out to you as a good screenplay that's a good question and as we all know you know we have always the answers on passive picks and fucking always um yeah we're definitely not just two idiots just going back and forth yeah of course not um anyways uh i would i'm now curious to see that screenplay i want to read it have you no i'm pretty sure you've seen snippets of screenplays before right i've seen them i've never read a full one but yeah Oh yeah, trust me, I'm not reading the entire thing. Like they made it into a movie. Why am I gonna read this? Um so I've seen it and I kind of like the descriptions in between and I know that they can get like some really fucking good dis- the funny thing is I think if books were written more like screenplays I'd probably still read books <laughs> um, because like I like that they are way more dialogue heavy and then they become like they have little snippets of like and then they turned and like they're always writing in a way for the actor to understand what is the emotion they're supposed to be showing and I kind of really dig that so yeah, I don't know. I, I really do want to see what is what that screen parade looks like now. Same. All right. Um so yeah, wait, did I oh yeah, so score. Um score is going to be forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown out of ten. Good shit. Nine out of ten. All right. Uh and whatever. I'm just gonna throw both of these together. Who cares? The third birthday in Gran Turismo seven. Um third birthday. Still playing it. That that's it. I I haven't playing playing much. Same same thing I've been saying last time. GT seven. They still playing it. This is on. This is on the list here. I think I streamed it. I don't remember, but also did, yeah. yeah, still playing it. The problem is, is like the next, the last ten tracks are basically 
full on laps instead of like 10 to 20 seconds of perfection. So now we're asking like a minute or two of perfection. And I'm just like, okay, that's going to be a lot that it's asking me for those last 10. So I, I'm pretty sure I streamed it and I did that and it fucking almost broke me, but like, I'm going to stick with it. So GT seven, it'll probably show up again next week. And then probably two more weeks after that. Cause I'm mean, sorry. It'll show up within the next three episodes, I feel like, because this is going to take me a long time. Like, there's no way I'm knocking out 10 of these in one stream. So, yeah, GT7, I'll come back to it. That's, that, that's both of them, just currently playing out of 10. I have nothing else to add. I've talked about both of these games. Fair so. enough. Okay, okay. Uh, go on for the next one. All right, uh, let's talk about Crazy Heart. So, this mm-hmm. was by director, this was directed by Scott Cooper. He's done a few movies. Um, I've only ever seen Antlers, but he's also done Black Mass, Hostiles, Out of the Furnace. Uh, basically, he's worked with Christian Bale a lot and uh, done some mm-hmm. stuff there. Um, Crazy Heart is stars Jeff Bridges, uh, and he is basically a alcoholic country singer, as they all are. We've all been and there. He, and he's uh, basically... I'm running that joke to world. the ground. It is now banned. <laughs> I can't do it again. And he's just basically at the end of his road. Uh, Jeff uh, Bridges won the Best Actor for this Oscar in 2009 or 2010. And uh, yeah, he w- really anchors this movie and is fantastic. But uh, Colin Farrell's also here. Uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Robert Duvall, a lot of good, got a lot of good actors here. This is just like one of those movies that is like just a very straight um down to earth drama it's never gonna like be like oh man this movie's absolutely fucking incredible you have to see it it's not that good but it's just a perfectly acceptable drama that does a good job it, it hits all the beats it needs to it's well acted well made and uh, very rewatchable so i enjoyed it um it's just good stuff i don't really have much more to say about it uh but you know worth watching if you're into that sort of thing i can picture the poster that's about it. I just picture Jeff Bridges holding a guitar and it says Crazy yep. Heart at the bottom. And I just always remember thinking, mm, I don't know if that's a good name. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's all I got out of 10. The, the only other thing I have to add is um, if I liked country music more, I probably would have gotten more enjoyment out of it. But I really fucking hate country music. So that was like a knock against it. But uh, other than that, it was good. So uh, I just want to say that I feel like country music is just past its prime and now you just have really shitty uh bro country which yeah i'm pretty sure country had its good heyday we're long past it fair all right uh you have two left yeah actually i only have two left okay so i'll do one more then um we'll do the red shoes next so this is from 1948 this was from the the resident clown mac this Hong was Kong. his pick. This was his pick for me for the month of June. Burnt Tendy uh, stand up. <laughs> yes, uh, I picked the fly for him, so he got the fly, and I got the red shoes. Um, this was one of my favorite movies he's suggested to me. So first of all, mm. I shouldn't. I should have looked no further than this was one of Martin Scorsese's favorite movies of all time. Oh, okay. Yeah, and like when I heard that, I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> I mean that makes hard a lot to of deny. sense here. Yeah, it's hard to deny at that point. So there's a couple of directors here, Emmerich uh, Pressburger and Michael Powell. Uh, it's basically oh. it's basically about a a woman who wants to become a world class dancer, and she needs to choose between a couple of different things, like between her love life, between her dedication to the craft. Black Swan is very obviously inspired by this, um, and just yeah, it just now here's the thing, here's the thing, and this is my only complaint about the movie. And then I'm gonna give it a bunch of praise, and it's the same issue I have with all of these movies from the 40s to 60s. I just kind of it, it just never go it, it it gets down a dark path, but it and never it quite back. full yeah it never commits to it. It has to pull back, and I understand that's just a it's limitation totally of the time they weren't able to do that, and despite that this is still an incredible film i am so so (laughs) upset that i didn't get to see this movie in 4k for the first time this is one of the few criterion 4ks they have this is a must watch in 4k okay i I really i really feel that way the the colors and the fucking vivid vivid fucking cinematography in 1948 this movie looks fucking jaw-dropping man she is okay. so so beautiful this movie there is an ex- i don't want to spoil anything but i'll say this there's an extended dance sequence in the middle of this movie that kind of gets a little trippy 
and it's i it's stunning the fact that this was made in 1948 like absolutely stunning to me how beautiful that sequence is and just overall how gorgeous this movie is but yeah it's really well made um like i said i can t- definitely see why this is one of scorsese's favorite movies of all times i, I could even feel a little of him in this like it's just it, it's it's so well made and i feel like it's the type of movie that inspired a ton of shit and i feel like black swan the wrestler a lot of even a lot of aronofsky's work was probably inspired by this so just incredible work and uh yeah definitely one i want to rewatch. and as soon as i can like when there's a criterion sale that one's going to be bumped up the list for one for me to get all right uh the road that i just took on this movie was oh yeah i keep seeing that one to i'm interested to oh shit scorsese to hbo max is streaming this to i will watch this totally today to oh fuck there's a 4k cut that is good like the cinematography in this movie is worth it okay i will hold off to adding it to my uh, well i was about to purchase it literally on amazon then i reminded myself i just bought a trilogy of uh, you know what i'll say it here because like i haven't actually said it i bought the man with no name trilogy in 4k now dorian do you know which movies those are uh no no not uh uh what is it uh for a few dollars more um oh sorry no handful of dollars a few for a few dollars more and the good bad and the ugly oh um, very cool those yes yeah, yeah, so, i've never seen any of those but yeah same. that's really no, that's cool. the thing i am like western is a huge blind spot for me so i saw that for a few dollars more got released in 4k and i was like wait a minute i think that's the second one of that trilogy and i know the good bad and the ugly has been in 4k for a while so that would imply that all three are probably up by this point. And I looked and I saw and I was like, yes, I have been meaning to get into Westerns for a while. Uh, at my previous job, one of my managers um, who actually his dad owned a ranch. So he was just like very deep into that. And he's like, oh, yeah, dude, Westerns are the shit. And I think before I left, I was like, dude, just tell me what Westerns you like and I'll just write them down. And I did. So. Like, uh, this is, he, they, he kept coming back to this one, and I think Stagecoach was another one. So it's like, oh, even Stagecoach. Like, I think it was like a movie from, like, the 30s, and it has a 4K gun. It's like, oh, my God, yes, please. So, yeah, that's all that. Um, I will probably hold off now until a Criterion sale as well, but Red Shoes, you've sold me on. Yeah, this one I think would be up your alley, and I cannot recommend enough. Like, I, I have heard HBO Max's streaming quality has gotten better, but this is definitely no, one you no, want to wait like, for the 4K. Not. If yeah. you say nice cinematography, like like yeah. that enough where it's like even crazy to think that in in the forties they were doing yeah. that, like I will hold off. Yeah, I'm was stunned at how how gorgeous this movie was for the forties. Like you wouldn't expect that sort of thing, but yeah. So this will be a treat in four K, and uh, I will begin this on a Criterion uh, sale too. So Dude, eight out of ten, very very good movie. Uh, Criterion sale out of ten. Now, what you said would have made it a perfect transition to Lawrence of Arabia, but I want to keep that for last. Um, <laughs> speaking of older movies with gorgeous cinematography, even years later, no, we're, I I want to, but we'll we'll hold off on that for a second. Days of Thunder. Um, I've been wanting to watch Days of Thunder for a while, and <laughs> the funny thing is that it wasn't until like later on that I realized that Days of Thunder, the song that I was listening to was unrelated to Days of Thunder, the movie that I watched. Here's the thing. I mean, Days of Thunder was a late 80s, early 90s movie starring Tom Cruise, and I'm like, well, that looks like an action blockbuster. That looks like a Jerry Bruckheimer production. I wouldn't be shocked if there was a song to go with it. But in hindsight, whenever I think about it, the song Days of Thunder that was on my playlist, you know, it's very synth. It's very new synth. It's not old synth. So it might have been my own damn fault for thinking that the song that I was listening to would have been the same Days of Thunder. So my bad there. But either way, it led me to a movie that I found really enjoyable like i tom cruise is tom cruise this man has a smile and you're just like you know what i trust you that is okay and he just has this charm to him and after seeing top gun maverick it's like man this man has just always had it like he really just has Ooh, i found it hold on i mean um okay hold on let's let's just skip forward like you hear this and it's like 
okay, well, yeah, that's definitely 80s inspired, so I'm not going to be too mad about the fact that I got it mistaken for thinking that it was, you know, related to the movie, but still, I got a good song and a good movie, so I'm okay with it. So Tom Cruise is a NASCAR driver, he likes going fast, it's a relationship between him and Robert Duvall, and that's pretty much the movie. It is funny, because whenever I look at this, it's like, oh, this is... You look at this and it wouldn't be too off the mark of saying like you saw 60% of Top Gun and said, okay, but how do we translate that over to NASCAR? And then you add a father figure with um, Robert Duvall. It's really good. I, I just kept finding myself being really happy with the movie like i just enjoyed all the performances uh it's still funny how it still has that romantic subplot uh, attached to it where it's like we didn't really need this but i assume other people needed this uh i you know it's a date movie so you need something for the wife and or girlfriend to latch on to besides you know it's tom cruise smiling what else do you really need um so yeah days of thunder i watched this one on hbo max um part of me i think it was like my excitement for seeing that it was on there that overtook me um uh, because i would have much preferred seeing this one in like in 4k not because of the visuals but because i would have wanted to hear it with probably the better audio fidelity that the movie would have given me but also considering that i wouldn't have wanted to keep it i probably got out better this way so days of thunder great movie it's uh, great's too strong but like it is just like a very good movie very competent the action and the driving is very fun sound design very good it's just very charming oh um oh my god i'm trying to remember his name but i can only remember the character's name uh, Merle from The Walking Dead, and it makes me so sad that I have to refer to him as that because I know that he's done way more than that, but that is my first touchstone because I feel really dumb. Uh, Michael Rooker. Oh, fucking Michael Rooker. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, Michael Rooker is the um, other guy that Tom Cruise is competing against. Michael Rooker is just, he is Michael Rooker in this movie, and he's just really fun to be around. I don't know. That's that's just all I can really say. Days of Thunder is just a really pleasant movie. And that's all I can say. Um, Days of Thunder is going to be a loud room out of 10. Yeah, I don't know much about this movie, but I like Tony Scott and I like Tom Cruise. So it's mm-hmm. watchlisted. Get to it eventually. No, you're not wrong, actually. Yeah, th- Tony Scott did direct this. Uh, yeah, so Tony Scott, uh, he's on a good streak with me. We've got Days of Thunder, we got Man on Fire, and we got Top Gun. I should probably dig deeper into this filmography. Yeah, I'll be excited when you get to uh, True Romance. Wait, oh, wait, I've seen True Romance. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. Oh, you yeah, yeah, Tony Scott's great. <laughs> he's yeah. good. Yeah, True Romance is a really good movie. Mm-hmm. I like that one a lot, so... Mm-hmm. You right. get the Tarantino writing in there, so it's the best of both worlds. Damn right. Yeah. Also, All right. Brad Pitt as a stoner, and I think he says the N word. What else do you need? <laughs> get Gary Oldman there playing out playing a what's the I don't know if this term's correct or not a wigger. <laughs> I don't I mean, know if I can say that, but that's what he is in the fucking I movie, think, and it's hilarious. Hold on. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Is wigger acceptable? Because like I'm pretty sure it's an insult against white people. So yeah, I think so. If it's not, then cut it out. I don't want to get canceled. No, that's, I, no, that's the thing. We'll leave it in because I've already said it too. So we'll get right, canceled together. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, like wigger is a turn. Like it really yeah. is, though. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's he's just a dumb white guy who, who's being a moron. But it's it's pretty funny. We'll go down <laughs> together on this one. Yeah. Anyways, all right. Uh, the uh, most so, thing I saw was Quora was as someone asking if wigger was offensive, and they're just like, I don't know. It's like, oh, cool, okay, cool, thanks, I guess. <laughs> cool. All right. All right uh, let's do the celebration. So, okay. Thomas Vinterberg, the director Vinterberg, of... Vinterberg, he's back! Yeah, so he did Druck, Jag 10, and now we're doing Festin. Mm. All these one-word, uh, these alternate titles here. We're getting these foreign alternate titles now all the time. So, the celebration. So, this movie... So, first of all, a little history lesson on this movie. The Dogma 95. Well, what the fuck is Dogma 95, you might ask? Well... Seriously, what is this? Why what, is that what just is a the, username? What is the Dogma 95? Well... Thomas Vinterberg and his buddy Lars, Von, uh, what's his name? Oh, Lars no. Von, Lars, Lars Von Trier. Lars Von Trier. Thank you. Oh, God. They're like, hey, you know what? We're tired of all this shit in films. Let, 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 let's, let's make some rules here. 
and let's follow these rules and let's make some movies with these rules. Now, I think the funny thing is they, Thomas Venterberg and Lars, they only did one each. Now there's about 30 to 40 movies that followed the Dogma 95 protocol, but there were some basic rules. So give me a second here. Let me look this up. Dogma 95 rules. So yeah, uh, one sec. I'm just pulling this up. Okay. So there's about 10 rules. Okay. Shooting must be done on location. Props and sets must not be brought in. The sound must never be produced apart from the image or vice versa. The camera must be handheld. Any movement or mobility attainable in the hand is permitted. The film must be in color. Special lighting is not acceptable. Optical work and filters are forbidden. The film must not contain superficial action. Temporal and ge geographical alienation are forbidden. Genre movies are not acceptable. The film format must be Academy 35 millimeters and the director must not be credited. All right. So those are the 10 rules of Dogma 95. And is this... this just the Nuzlocke challenge of movies. Why did you do this? <laughs> Basically. And this is the first, the most famous and honestly, looking at the list, probably the only good one of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, because every other one I looked at looked like absolute dog shit. <laughs> but this one was really fucking great, and it shows the fucking talent of uh, Thomas Vinterberg that he can take this fucking weird-ass list of rules and actually make a pretty good film out of it. And not only make a fucking good film out of it, but, but make it... Okay, so first of all, watching this movie, it's undeniably how rough this movie looks because of those rules. Hmm. It basically looks like documentary style, which believe it or not, fits the theme of this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's an incredible film. I really don't want to say much because I feel like I feel like this is the type of movie, and I know most, most everyone who's listening to this probably hasn't seen it. Mm -hmm. It's the type of movie that you really want to know as little as possible going into it. Um, I, I will say that it's if it, it, this is the type of movie though that'll make you feel better about any family drama you have going on. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. But it's an incredible film, just some amazing performances, a couple of moments in this movie where I just went, holy shit, because I did not see shit coming. And yeah, I don't know, man, this guy is a really fucking good director. Uh, this is my second favorite of his. Now, I still, Druck's still my favorite, but I did actually enjoy this more than The Hunt. Um, I think this was just an incredible piece of film. This is another must get for the Criterion collection for me, especially because this Criterion is really cool. It comes in like a special case with like all of, like the, the entire uh, Dogma 95 manifesto. So like, oh, fuck, that's cool. I want that <laughs> Fucking as, uh, as, as, pre as, pre yeah, as pretentious and nerdy as that is. I want it. It's really fucking cool. So uh, yeah, just uh, I can't recommend this movie enough. It's so unique in the way it's shot and the way it's done. Following these crazy ass fucking rules and uh yeah just a cool experience i hope to never have to hear about something that's as bad as talk me 95 like i never want to hear another manifesto that sounds like that, that sounds like something a shooter would write before they went to go murder children i hate this i mean kind of the same thing they're you know murdering movies <laughs> it, i don't know what else Manifesto out of hand. I don't fucking know. I, Tom and Vinsenberg, good job, man. Good job. You, you fucking hamstrung yourself for no reason, and you let drop, 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 drop. No. Drug, drug. Oh wait, uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm being. I'm trauma. Fuck. I'm so sorry, drug. I'm sorry. I'm just. You're just getting really close to a part of my brain that doesn't want to be activated. So this is a nine out of ten for me. Uh, stellar fucking movie. Really great. Drug, good movie. I'll get there. Um. Man. All right. Hate you so much. That's not. That's. I'm already angry, aren't I? Okay. Um. Fuck the yeah, part one. Uh, you you want to do uh, Arabia at the end, right? Because I got one more. Yeah, go for it. All right. So we'll talk about the quarry. This this deserves a special late placement. This is my I return to video games. <laughs> I, no, this is not. my return to video games. It's please, fucking. It's an interactive please, movie. Please clap. Please clap. I'm not gonna clap. I'm not gonna clap, clap if you're like this is. What, I, Fine, only because it's a Ted. No, I was gonna say Ted Cruz. Only because it's a it's a Jeb Bush reference. Thank you, thank you. And I hope you're doing the light smile that he does. Oh, too. I am. I'm doing a light smile okay. right now. It's okay, very, good. Very, very, very Jeb like. <laughs> um. So yeah. So here's the thing. I I I haven't I haven't dropped Final Fantasy 15. I swear to God, I'm gonna get back to it. But 
Listen, if I, I have said as much shit as I have and I haven't dropped those games, you're safe. Yeah. I um I haven't uh I haven't I so, sorry, excuse me. I really like the style of interactive movie games that Supermassive does. Uh, House of Ash was a lot of fun. I really liked that. I thought that was one of their better ones. Till Dawn's obviously a classic. And then, um, you know, the other two are kind of hit and miss. I like Little Hope, but a lot of people don't. Madame Madame was mid. But this is kind of the first one since Until Dawn, where they've kind of just had a budget. <laughs> and like a, like a sizable budget. And they were given time. They're like, okay, make something that's like actually kind of a spiritual successor to Until Dawn. Like you got your budget, hire your good actors, and go. And this was this so far. I'm about halfway through. I'm on chapter five. I think there's like eleven chapters overall, so not quite halfway, but nearly there. Um, so far, this is really good. It definitely feels like until like the closest they've gotten until until dawn. It's very high budget. Uh, it's got l- really a great cast of many many great actors in here, um, and all really talented people. Um, the dialogue. I'm going to be honest. It's pretty cringe at times. It's pretty bad, but I feel but it works. Intentionally or not? Yeah, I think it's intentionally, and I think it works here because this is basically just trying to be an '80s slasher horror, and all of this shit fits perfectly with that theme. So there's like a lot of lines that like I was I've been streaming this the last couple of days, and Ryochi's been in there with me. Shout out to Ryochi, and uh, he's uh, <laughs> we've just been laughing together in some of this shit because it's so like oh my god, but uh, it's it's fun. I really like it so far. So I've had a great time with it. Um, and again, like I said, just really really solid cast across the board. The acting's good. Uh, the story's interesting. I, I I have a feeling where they're going with it already. Uh, but I'm sure since I'm so early in, there'll be some twists I don't expect yet. Managed to keep everyone alive so far, knock on wood. I imagine they're all going to be fucking dead <laughs> before long. I remember my Until Dawn playthrough where I had like one person only survive and <laughs> everyone else bit it. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll keep a few more people alive in this one. Uh, but yeah, so far, uh, really enjoying it. It's a blast. And uh, it's not a super long game. So I imagine hopefully by the next episode, I'll be done it and can... Uh, talk a bit more about it so now i'm just curious until dawn um so i think that for the most part i had like one or two people dead like just through normal play and it wasn't until the end that i fucked up and then killed like at least six people um was that the same case for you or i think i had like two people die before the end and then yeah they had basically everyone died except for the one guy (laughs) so yeah. I love how that ending is just like, I, I think you can just clear the entire board right now on accident. Well, it's funny. Uh, House, House of Ash is kind of similar. House of Ashes is kind of similar where it's like you can kind of you obviously people can die before that and had one guy die before that. But then you get to the end and like there are like a thousand different ways to die. But this time I managed to keep everyone alive. Like I was really on my game and uh, I managed to keep everyone alive except for that one guy who died earlier. So I was pretty happy with myself there. Uh, this one, I, I feel like it'll have to be free. I don't know. Like especially after Danganronpa, like I'm just not in the mood for something that isn't going to touch my brain properly with gameplay. So uh, just seeing this, I'm like, pretty sure I'll enjoy it. I enjoyed until dawn. Not right now though. Not right now. So, um, out of 10, uh, I'm going to give it a, fuck. I'm trying to think of the line in the fucking game. It's something like, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't. You can fuck a bear. That's cinema out of ten. Hold on, what? There's some line about fucking a bear that's really weird that made me laugh. So, yeah. cinema. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'll just go play it right now, like immediately right now. Uh, and cinema. Cards. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye bye, bye bye, bye. All right, okay. talk no, about no. my spy. Oh, talk about my yeah, spyless no. movie. If we're gonna talk about cinema, we're gonna talk about cinema. Lawrence of Arabia. Finally, it's been about three years that I've been wanting to watch this movie. It's been it's been stuck in the Columbia Pictures Volume 1 4K classics thing. And I really did get close to spending the money to play play to watch this cinema, right? And then it finally happened. They announced it for Steelbook, and I was just very excited to be able to finally watch this movie. And you know what? It was probably even better than I already set up all these expectations for. This movie is a fucking masterclass in not just shooting and, you know, actual the film itself, but 
the acting itself was something that I thought was going to be a little lacking for no reason other than the fact that the first half of the movie feels like it plays itself very languid. Like it is just very uh, uh, scenes, uh, not scenes. Um, oh my God, I can't really remember the word. I guess um, uh, environment heavy, I guess. Like it just feels like it's more about soaking in the environment than presenting you a story with characters and all that and that's the thing i was still all in for that like the movie has very small characterizations that it drops in the first half and it and it just gives you these gorgeous visuals an incredible score this movie is so grand this movie is the epics that i miss and I'm just so happy that it gave me that, even for the first half. If I okay, so the reason I will mention first half and second half is that uh, I don't. I think it was the same way on Blu-ray. I assume on VHS and DVD it was the same thing, but it was two 4K discs. I'm pretty sure when it was only on Blu-ray, there was the two discs as well. But the first disc is about I think two hours and twenty minutes or so, and then there's an intermission. Anything before the intermission feels a lot like this is just like. You guys have never seen 70 millimeter film stock do shit like this, and it's milking that out for all it's got. And even now, what this movie was 60s, so 80 years later, almost 80 years later, it's just as impressive. And that's fucking talent right there. So that's the first half. But now the second half is so the funny thing is that I had my cousin over, right? Uh, I showed him the scene. Uh, no, no, sorry, no. Uh, the timeline goes that I showed him the first half of Lawrence or Arabia, then the intermission, and we were going to swap discs. This man, uh, he he taps out. He taps out of Lawrence or Arabia, and I'm like, he, he's like, ah, oh, man, it's just like I get it, but they're not doing anything, and I'm like, well, you're fucking wrong. You're an idiot. I hate you. Get out of my house. Uh, but before I kicked him out, I was like, by the way, I got the Batman in 4K. Let's hear this shit. And then I kicked him out. Uh, during the intermission, I went to go have a snack because I hadn't eaten all day. And then I came back and I watched the second half. The second half is fucking hilarious because it would have fixed all of his problems. The second half becomes a movie that focuses on the characters and it has the environments to go with it. You realize that the first half of the movie is just set up to give you the payoff in the second half. And I, I think I maybe said second half twice. Whoops, sorry. The first half is good build up for the second half. Anyways, basically, this movie is a fucking masterpiece. Um, I love the the main character of T. E. Lawrence is someone that belongs probably in the pantheon of just greatest film characters because it's one of those things that he is just perfectly acted and even in the first half but it isn't until the second half that you just kind of realize that he was doing it pretty much the entire time this movie is a goddamn epic it is a masterpiece i am so happy to have this seal book and uh you are a fucking moron for spite listing this one. Oh my god i want you to keep this one on your spite list because then i want you to keep this because the longer that you wait to watch it the stupider you will feel for having waited to watch it that long so please add another three three years to your spite list because i want that hangover feeling of your own stupidity to crash on you even harder yeah, stupid movie. Spite listed for good now, baby. Let's go. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my god, that's even better. Man, I can't I can't wait until you die and you go to hell and they're checking your name on the board and you're like, like you never watched Lawrence or Arabia? <laughs> double hell. You're going to double hell. And then they pull the lever. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I don't Holy know. I, I feel. Shit, man. I feel. I, I feel like part of me feels dumb for not watching it, but the other part of me feels fun for spite listing it. So we'll, we'll see how long we can keep it. No, going. no, dude. This is going to be another red shoes truck or whatever movies you have spited. This is going to be another one where well, it's like hey, you're going to. I, I never spited red shoes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Shoes. What was the other one that we mentioned on this uh, episode? Druck, um, Titani. Titani. There we go. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be another one of those where you, if you ever crack and watch it you are going that all that time that you had spiting it is going to turn into poison almost immediately and i can't wait to see it if you do because it's go it's it's just gonna be like 2001 where you just had the review Uh, i'm a fucking idiot five out of five 
<laughs> this is going to be another one. And whenever it, when it happens, if it happens, it's going to be glorious because I'm just going to be over here like I fucking called that one from a mile away. <laughs> this movie is yeah, incredible. Probably. Holy shit. Like I, I thought by halfway through, I'm like, yeah, I get it. Then by the second half, I was like, no, no, I get it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Ed. I'm very glad. Congratulations. By look, look, buy the steelbook in secret. Just keep it buried under somewhere. <laughs> Tell no one that you have yes, it. Yes. And then when you crack, you're not going to hate yourself even more for watching it incorrectly. True. True. By the there way, uh speaking of transfers, gorge. Oh my god. There if it wasn't for some of the um the environment shots um, with the sky in the background and how there's a whole bunch of detail packed in there. If it wasn't for that, you could trick me into thinking, Oh, sorry. If it wasn't for that and the audio, because like you can kind of tell like the audio was probably like stereo at the most, like you can kind of hear it. But even then, like there are still like the fact that they took this and they put it in Dolby Atmos. And there's some moments that hit hard. Like there are some explosions in this that like it happens. You're like, Oh fuck. That was, that's actually really good. How did you do that? So if it wasn't for that, there are some shots in this movie. It's like, man, this might be one of the cleanest transfers I've ever seen. Like there were, there was beautiful work done to this. Uh, so yeah, Lawrence of Arabia, Kino out of 10. Cinema at its finest out of 10. Masterpiece at its finest out of 10. Uh, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision out of 10. Spite list out of 10, baby. Oh my god, I, I god, I hope you never watch this one. All right, is that it? Are we done? Uh, well, we're only at two hours, so I think we need to pad this out for another two hours because we have to have a minimum of four hours. So let's talk You're about right. The Last of Us 2. I okay, feel like perfect. The Last of Us 2 is one of the best end card. Okay, all right, so uh, in counterpoint, <laughs> I think The Last of Us Part 2 is actually one of the worst fucking video games of all time. <laughs> if you like this game, I wish nothing but death to you, okay? I want you to walk off a bridge and I want you to to be wearing lead shoes. Neil Druckmann's a genius. Neil Druckmann is the person that I was talking about, okay? He specifically, out of everyone, should be wearing... <sighs> we're not... No, we're not doing that, okay? Uh, I already card. disrespect... I already disrespect enough of your time with normal three episodes. I'm not going to disrespect it further by elongating this end card. Hey, look at you. You got to the end of the episode. From episode zero... To the day that I finally get lazy and cancel the show, a big thank you to Joey Rawlings for providing the perfect name for the show. Be sure to always give him thanks, either out loud as you're listening to this, or you can just send him a thank you tweet at boogeyman117 underscore. That's boogeyman117, I-E instead of Y, double O. Be sure that it's an underscore, not a dash, 117.